episode you've all been waiting for, Flappers Girl. Thank I mean, you, thank you, in the flesh. There's a lot of pressure within the Orthodox female community. I've been slut shamed for having a loud voice and trying to talk about women's issues. Some dude just absolutely waving his schlong to the entire world to see. So if I asked you to apologize, would you? Did you laugh? Bottom line, come on, tell me. There are systemic roots which have fostered an environment in which the Aguna crisis has bred. So the Rabbanim are powerless, but they just yeah. perceive that they're powerless. They can just open up a book. We're back to not agreeing with Allah. You are arguing with, with, with Ramendel Shabbat. I have a whole library devoted to ways in which Gitin has been applied through different centuries. Wherever I can get the message across to appeal for help and outside resources, I will go. These are the type of things that I'm telling you, by the way, does not help you actually make change. You're going on to a show that is clearly hating Jewish orthodoxy. You think actually that that is helping spread your message in any way with the positive result. People are complex labels. You basically want me to be a chameleon. Not that terrible of a person after all. <laughs> women, I love women. The best. I know the best women. The women. I really hope that you include that part in the podcast that you don't delete it. 100% include in the podcast. All right, everybody, uh, welcome to episode number 47 of Mislabeled. Let's just start with one very simple thing. If you're watching this, please like, subscribe, and comment. I'm not going to say it twice because we're bringing to you, to y'all, the episode you've all been waiting for. So so we're here with the one and the only, <laughs> you're really the one and you're really the one and only flappers girl. Thank I mean, you, thank you. In the flash. There, there's no real, I don't think there's a, a carbon copy. Not forget about carbon copy. There is no anything like you. So you. Um, for good or for bad, I think everyone is on the same page about that. Um, I will say though, in props to me, I, I've, always <laughs> I've always played the long game. That's always been my philosophy and you are sitting here right now. So it, it, it's serving me well. Um, I want to get right into things. For myself, by the way, who you'd be surprised, I know a little bit about you, but I came onto the social media scene, scene like much later. So I, I wanna just, first of all, get an understanding and for everyone watching, cause some people don't know, I'm sure we have, not everyone that watches us knows you that well. Um, so I wanna know, first of all, like, just give us a little background on yourself, like where you're from, et cetera, the basics. Sure, my background while well, I'm turning 36 in a couple of days, I have been married for almost 18 years uh, to a boy I met when I was nine years old. Um, we both went through the Beis Yaakov, um, Chaim Berlin system together in a sister-brother school and came from a very similar background. Um, we both sort of felt like the system was, you know, a little bit stifling and that, it, you know, I'm sure you, you know, you understand that. There's a little bit too judgment, too much judgmentalness within the system. And, um, you know, I decided to really do my, do my ishtadlis, shall you say, on whistleblowing on some of the uh, discrimination that I was noticing underneath my own nose and things that I had experienced as a girl going through the Beis Yaakov system. And that's how I became Flatbush Girl. I started talking about all the uh, inequalities that I was noticing. Got it, yeah, no, I was more just looking for a little bit of background on more like your personal life and like, I, I get, I mean, you did fill us in a little bit about that. Um, so what was your start getting into um, the social media scene? You've been in it for like, what, seven years now? Five, seven years? Um, almost eight years, yeah. Almost, almost eight, eight years, years. yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm new to this, by the way. We're all new to this. I think okay. we're here for like a year. Or before that, we, we were non-existent. Well, you're doing amazing in such a short amount of time. Uh, I know, Thank I know. You Thank much. you Thank you so much. We've, we've definitely made our mark. There's no That's question it. about it. definitely caused some ruckus. Um, no, thank God. So, what It's amazing what you can accomplish when you just refuse to shut up. There you go. <laughs> I, mean, I, I think Zach says that about me. I'm not sure if he feels that way about himself. But... No, I feel about myself too. Oh, you do? Okay. Um... Well, there's a certain authenticity, I think, about like the energy that you guys bring to the table with your podcast. I really want to just give you some props. Like you really, Try our best. You, there's none of that fakeness. You know, you're not speaking like politicians. And I'm sure that also just comes from the top. So kudos. There's very little filter. So I'm, I'm not that we... terrible of a person after all. <laughs> Like how bad? I, hold on a second. How bad of a human being am I? Could you rate just, labels oh, morality tell me. from one from rate like, all of our moralities from one. Hitler to, to like the Lubavitch Rebbe. I don't know. Like the God Dar. Like go go. Where well, is it? I don't know enough about your perspective specifically on the Aguna crisis. So how about I'll rate you after we're done talking about the Aguna crisis? I love it. That yeah. sounds amazing. Fair. Okay, fine. No, but <laughs> purely based on seriously speaking, what what was the first thing that got you into the social media game? Was it just a general overall like inequality that you, that you felt was going on, or was there a specific thing that you were just like, all right, I got to take action on this particular issue that's going on? and I'm gonna just make my mark here, and then like maybe develop into something else. 
Well, I guess as I, you know, splashed onto the scene by jumping into a pool fully clothed in six inch heels and a tight dress, I sort of got a lot of people's attention. And I saw how much pushback uh, from a girl who decides to take agency over her own, you know, creative expression would encounter. And initially when I got that pushback, it was very frightening. And I started, you know, intuitively wanting to apologize and backtrack and try to change my optics. Um, and I had to really, really fight hard to go of a more counterintuitive route and try to build some muscle on actually doubling down on some of my statements and my persona. Is it shocking at all to you that there was, that people were just like, whoa? That Was that shocking to you? Yeah, actually, I think I was a little naive. Do yeah. you think that was only men or that was also women? Both. Both. Do you think there's a reason why maybe that wasn't done before? What wasn't done before? That a, like a from girl would... Jump Six inch heels, and yeah, that just jumped headfirst into the pool. Like, was, is there a reason possibly that that wasn't done previously, uh, or, or I'm ever, sure it or has since? Been. I think it has been done in different ways, but very often that pushback pushes people out of the system, where they then say, "You know what? I can't be in this space anymore," and then they leave and they leave quietly. Really, I've never seen that video before. I'm being totally, I'm being honest. I've just never seen Wait, that. You're before. discussing a specific video that was like your first video. Yes, but it was just my yeah. Right. It was just my. But I just, I do want I wanted to clarify. Did you start Flappish Girl with like fighting what you saw as certain injustice in the system, or did you start it as just like I wanted to be an influencer? And so no my, judgment from us if that was what you wanted to do, but like, oh, what was your like, the birth of this channel was for fighting things or no? Yeah, the birth of the channel came from wanting to make a social statement on the confines in which Jewish women have to operate where they have to walk a very fine balance of being modest and, you know, being very, you know, timimistic and have a certain amount of tzniyas in their midos and, um, you know, certain refinement that I just felt, you know, while I have those midos, I just felt that's an unfair burden for women to have to have, whereas a lot of times the men who seem to be a little bit more liberated just enjoy and bask in that freedom a little bit more. And I just wanted to push push it a little bit more to make it more normalized. So do you think, so a couple questions. I, I don't have a question. I would agree with you that the women that bask in it, so to speak, it, it's looked on worse, but do you think that the men that bask in it, that anyone sees that as a positive thing either? Um, I think just people's tolerance for seeing that in a guy is a little higher. And I think especially within our patriarchal system, within the from community, which I think has incredible milos, but also some significant chesronos, you know, I think it's important that we just don't, you know, sweep that under the rug and we try to give a voice to the women who are noticing that their their roles and their voices are not really being welcome within their places of worship. They're being segregated into different spaces of the shuls um, and their voices are being um, monitored. They can't sing without putting a big notice in front of the, the, the solo that it's Kol Isha. If they show their faces in magazines, they're considered a slut. There's a lot of problems. Couple, couple of quick things that I just want to understand. There are certain <laughs> things that I'm in total agreement, but you're saying a lot of different things in, in one sentence. Certain things are definitively against halacha, so to speak, not non-equivocally, uh, so to speak. Right. It sounds like those things you're saying you also don't care about. I just want to get the playing field correct. Is that the case? So, first of all, I always believe in working within the confines of halacha. I think there's beauty in continuing our tradition and our... Our, our, our Yiddishkeit and, you know, emulating a lot of what happened in the Altaheim. But unfortunately, a lot of these new things about women's representation are new phenomenon that are birthed out of extremism and are not reflective of our tradition. So let's say Kol Isha. Let's say Kol Isha. You just picked that example. I think you picked one, honestly, a little bit more even extreme earlier. Is Kol Isha birthed out of extremism or is it just the Halacha and Mishnah Bura? So from what I understand about the Halachos, and obviously I don't have smicha because, you know, that kind of information is not... Given access, to, you know, I don't have access to the information when I go through the Beis Yaakov system. I'm taught more simpler things like Chumash and, you know, Kashras and um, Lama Tes Malachos. So, you know, from what I understand, the Lachos of Kol Isha are really a burden on the male to, um, you know, to be aware of for himself. And it's not a burden on the female to limit her voice or to co create warnings for other men to protect them from themselves. They are allowed to do their own thing. And the fact that now the burden is on females is a form of the manifestation of this extremism. Well, um, so what would you, what's the burden? That's my question. So imagine if when you had to publish, let's say, a, do, do you do anything creatively? Do, sure. 
what do you do? Music, sure. You do music? Yes, okay, sure. so imagine if before you posted that video, you were not allowed to share it on a platform with women. Otherwise, people would question your intentions that maybe you were a pervert. You mean share on a platform with men? No. No, no with women. With, the opposite within gender. Within the muscle, you, you would be posting to women. Oh, right. that's what you're saying. Imagine okay. people would question your intentions if you shared that music with a woman. And imagine if you didn't give the disclaimer in, we the, do it first all the time. second. <laughs> In the first second that I am a male singing and like you may get turned on from my voice. So I mean, that's what he's hoping. Well, that's what he's hoping. Okay, first, 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 first of all, we well, said here's... the guy could hope, but the woman can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, but here's... we're not supposed to do it. Right. It's not. It's not a good thing that for a guy to thirst trap. It's not. That's not a positive. Yeah, thing. Yeah, we keep telling Shmuley to but stop, but he, he. I am not saying that he would be thirst trapping by doing a song where he sounds good, or that a woman would be thirst trapping by doing a song where she looks good. I'm saying that people are allowed to have their expression of their creativity without being reminded of their gender. Uh, all right, everybody, I want to take a quick second to give a big shout out to our sponsor, Joseph Bender Suits, just finished three suits. A few people came over to me actually from the wedding, uh, a wedding I was at last night, uh, really, really loved it. Give him a shout, 838-202-8102, uh, again, 838-202-8102. Uh, what does he do, like bespoke Fla custom suits? Yeah, but Flappers Girl, for you, he's going to make a special tight, tight-ass dress. Okay, you want awesome. me to hook it up? Yes, like, awesome. go for it. And he does heels as well, eight inches. Awesome. Special. Perfect. All right. I'll jump into a pool wearing his clothes. Love it, yes. Joseph Bender Suits, 838-202-8102. Oh, we were supposed to talk about the Aguna crisis. No, we are, we are, we are. We're, there, there's, it's a <laughs> we'll long podcast. We're gonna, no, we're going to talk about everything. <laughs> we're just... We're, so when we're, it comes to... When it comes to... <laughs> when it comes to, let's say, the Coley Show concept i think it's a broader it's i think it's a broader i would say argument or conversation of what is equality what is inequality meaning men have their have their issues and quote unquote you want to call them issues you want to call them problems we have our own chesronos in which we have to be weary of and therefore the, there's halachas for us to do certain things that women don't have to do right um and then for for women there's going to be things for them now, certain things might seem, quote unquote, unfair. For example, uh, a woman doesn't have to, right, go to Minyan Min Hamarv. They don't have to. It's not, a, it's not a burden, quote unquote, that you guys have. In Technically, we have that burden. Now, it may not seem as much of a burden as Kolisha, because nowadays, right, maybe because we're more Americanized or whatever the reasons may be, it may seem that that's something that's not as important, right, of something that makes us feel more... Um, I guess, sheltered or right behind a closed door, right? But we have things that we have to do, right? And we have to take on that burden. But, but that's where I want to cut you off because you're saying the word burden, but how I view it is I view it as a privilege that I'm very jealous of and that the fact that I'm not invited to partake in three minyanim three times a day makes me feel very like I belong in the kitchen. But really, we're really, really distracting from the main point for why we came here, I don't think talking about extremist issues like, you know, Kol Isha or, or female representation in different areas, like, that's really not what bridges uh, well, we'll move forward. I just want to say one thing. I just want to say one thing. We're going to move forward. I just want to say one thing. You are using very intense words. You're saying extremist issues regarding very basic halacha to, to a strong degree. And you're, you're stating certain things that post-pod, I have a very strong feeling that if I were to delve into or speak to a lot of people, it wouldn't be exactly as you're saying it. So you're just, I'm just saying, you're using strong words. That's fine. I'm, I'm right. totally down to move on to that going issue. I think it's a very important issue. And that's we, the reason we are going to move on to it. We're going to move on to it. The point is, is that there are systemic roots which have fostered an environment in which the Aguna crisis has bred and allowed to fester, mm -hmm. right? By allowing these micro oppressions like Kol Isha and women's faces not being included in magazines like Ami and Mishpacha have a policy that neck up photos of women, even if they're the authors or editors of an of a article, are not allowed to be included. That air. Right? And then right. also we I mean, have... there are two different things. You're conflating two issues right now. One is one is taking a halacha, and I think that Ami or Hamodir or whatever they're doing is running with it. The other thing is a basic halacha of Kalisha, so, which is then changing, quote-unquote, halacha and saying that this type of thing is now allowed on platforms because we've decided that we feel that we're marginalized. So if you go back to our history, there are women in the Torah who sang, right? Mm -hmm. Women sang during Kriyas Yamsuf, they used tambourines, and women's voices have not been stigmatized in our most original source work. So you have to question how these halachos emerged were specifically around a female's voice when there are male commentators 
creating the exegesis, and then these are become this becomes the 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 official policy. It's a policy that is not necessarily backed up with a real clear trail of breadcrumbs. It gets distorted along the way through greed and power, which is what brings us to the Aguna crime. That's totally your personal opinion. There is no con there is no actual proof of anything you're saying on that. I just want to say the straight the basic, up. And, yeah, go ahead. Wait a second. You haven't done the research. You I just want to say the one right. concept. But, okay, hold on a second. I well, just want to say. I, I just want to no, say one concept. There is I want to say one I'm concept. Not, I'm just, I'm just, I would argue. You exactly. can't say something doesn't have proof if you haven't looked into it. She there might not be proof. What is that? Huh? She just she just had a pretty complicated thing, and she might not have proof. I don't know if you've done the research, but that's a. How could you know that you haven't been around for twenty five hundred years? Well, first of all, there's, you can you can study things. You can you can definitely there are there are scholars who would look for the into last that exact, thousand years. If you don't think that there have been academic papers written about this exact topic, like a lot of ink has been spilled on this exact topic of how the tradition mutates throughout generations. Of course yeah. there is. That's like Judaism has a Masora, a basic Masora. For the last thousand years, yeah. you go through any Rishon Ahron, etc. Yeah, what she is saying is one hundred percent not true. What, Straight up. That what? That kol isha is a thing. Or that women singing in front of men or women sneers being a light subject. I didn't say that women subject. can sing in front of that. men. She's... I never said women can start singing in front of men or even that men and women can Who sing the burden together. is on. I'm just saying that the burden of protecting a listener has become a normalized concept that women now... They, they censor themselves. And also when they... A lot of women have private pages on Instagram because they... Are singing so they can or have dancing. the reach and impact that let's say imagine if you were forced to be on private how would that maybe hinder is your it possible a lot growth? of them is it possible a lot of them want to also be like why do they want to because they care about the Torah. Torah. right because they're convinced by sources that are not actually quoting sources that they should feel embarrassed if they are more Flagrant you're saying how not necessarily. You're saying how they feel. Once again, once again, no, there's two things. Not necessarily. There's two sides. It's a societal there's, norm. There's two sides of, of of the same coin, which is one, someone feeling embarrassed because they feel like they uh, something's being stripped from them, and then something being beautiful because it's private. For it, I just want to take a really, really, really hard concept: sex. Right? Doing it in public. Right? We should be able to just do it. Right? Because I, why should I feel like I have to make my body something that's very private? Why can I just walk around naked? Why do I have to feel embarrassed as a man? Uh, and we can get into it. Why can't I just walk around with my schlong out? Why do I have to feel embarrassed that I can't do that? So it's not an embarrassment thing. It's a privacy thing. That is something that is healthy. That is someone who's supposed well, to keep it to themselves. you just have to equate it between men and women in order to find the holes in your argument. Why is Lipa Schmelzer and why is, you know, why are the male singers not on private? On their social media platforms, why a, do they there's between a, the two there's genders? There's different halacha. halacha. Right, but, but Every you, halacha, look men and women have different halachas. Look at it in terms of halachas. the nezek. Look at it in terms of damages. How does it hinder a woman's growth and her career when you go to all the weddings? But halacha's not based on that. Hold maybe on, their growth in their career. Wait a second. Hold, I, I would say a woman's growth and career in terms of music, right. right? And the Jewish belt is not supposed to necessarily be what a man's growth and career is supposed to be. A man's voice, Should, for example, for example, it was davening for the Amid, right? Okay. Right on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. A male is doing that for the entire congregation. Right. Should a woman be able to do that for the entire congregation? I can't answer that because I'm not an expert on halacha no, but and I, what the I'm, limitations are. I don't know. I would love for the answer to be yes, and I would defer to so those who are smarter than me. What I am saying is that I have not a Dayan, I'm not a Rav, but I can tell you definitively. It's a good thing you mentioned what's that. Second, second, I, can, I can tell you definitively that a woman <laughs> should not be davening for the Ahmed on Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. That is a male's role over there. Right? And so because of that, that doesn't mean that there's inequality. That means that people have two different things. Males, right, don't... don't Separate but equal is correct. not equal. That I disagree with you. Oh, really? I disagree with you. So, How for example, would you feel Nero, if there was a separate entrance for Jews at Target when you had to go shopping? Separate but equal. You have a you're separate taking, entrance. Wait, you're taking two. You're, you're taking two totally different things. Not really. You Why absolutely are. Why is one's religious one observance one because and their because and their religious observance halachos have different. different because because different halachos right have different laws are for different people. Halachos neros. You guys can do it. I can't. Yes, you could. Men are actually obligated we, we're to lie. You are obligated. Yes, you are. You're obligated to lie. We're not obligated. If, if we don't have the, a spouse, if we don't have a spouse, if you live alone, if you live alone, you're obligated. But what about if I'm what if I have a spouse? 
then it's perf- then it's a then it's a enhanced mitzvah for her undertaking. Oh, but it's, not it's an enhanced obligated mitzvah. For I just want to say one thing. I just want to say one thing. That's something that you want. That you want. I, I'm, this is probably the best way to say this. And I do want to move on to that kind of thing. I really do. I don't, but you want hal- every halacha to make perfect sense to you. And unfortunately, the way the Torah no, works, that's not true. You do. You want it to be what every works halacha in your brain. Only the halachos that have to do with men and women. That's but you want that's it to make sense halacha. to you. That's every halacha. Not really. That's not no. every halacha. Shabbos is not different for men and women. That's not the way Torah works. That's what I'm trying to. That's my main point. You want every single thing to be exact within Torah. That's not the way Torah works. But that's not. So what we I could want. try to change the Torah, or we could try. Shabbos to... is different for men and women. Why is it different? There's many halachas within Shabbos that men and women do differently. Could you give me an example? One halacha sneiros. Two. But men are obligated two, to life. Two, two doing kiddush, right? As a male, as the head of the household, the male is supposed to do kiddush. Okay, right? but in a lot of households that are considered orthodox and from, a lot of the women make lacha mishnah. I understand. I under- wait, is- hold up. I, wait a second. I understand that's considered, right? They're considered orthodoxy, whatever whatever right. that is. What I would say is that's not mishnah or orthodoxy. Right. Okay. That's what I would Fine. say. So you can, you can have Anyways, your boundaries on, that you try to moving protect. Moving on. I, again, I, I'm all... I, I'm, all for I, again. I was just trying to understand the playing field. It seems a little bit like you're operating outside the typical Mishnah Bar orthodoxy. So I just harder to have the conversation. Yeah, I on that. You'd be very surprised what's in the Mishnah Bar. Uh, I, I th- wonder I'm, how much of it you really know because there's a lot of things in there that actually justify what I'm talking about. Maybe, but nothing that you've said so far is justified or true based how on what it's saying. How do you know that? You don't have a Mishnah Bar in front of you. I because I grew up in a home and I've been in every single home of people that are have lineages of basic Torah for the last a billion years from Gedolim, et cetera, okay, right. they're not doing any of the things you're saying or anything she's saying, so I can well, rest my laurels on that. just because they're not doing it doesn't mean they would say that what she's saying is wrong. They would just no. say, like, this is there's what we're reason. doing because we're more no. comfortable no, with no, it. No, 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 there's a, there's a specific reason. No, it's not true. It's halacha. It's basically halacha. A woman not doesn't. Always. A woman doesn't. Uh, a man doesn't like halacha's narrows because it's a halacha. The man is not supposed to do that. That's not true. It's not a halacha. It's a custom. No, it's a minhag. But it's an inequality. How okay, does I a minhag you. evolve? I, I, a minhag evolves by what the establishment by endorses. What Jews do. And then how the sh- establishment okay, reflects hear, the hear. policies that the ones okay. on top are I, suggesting. I hear, I, and this brings us to the Aguilar. Listen, so in not in a confrontational way, this is just, I just wanted to, to, to broaden to end the summary. The basic idea that you're saying is the same idea as white supremacy, which is basically that male, white males started America, and so everything came down from it. And so all the things that we have and all the laws and everything in the Constitution, the reason why white males are, right, we should have affirmative action, all the all the different things that we have is based upon the fact that everything that was created on America was based upon a false identity or a false, you know, a falsehood of white males bringing it from the top down and then the breadcrumbs, you know, being, you know, mishkebobbled in the fray. No, actually, I disagree with that firmly. We have a beautiful Jewish lineage in which we have four imahos and three avos. And that is part of our shared identity where we know from our very origins that female inclusivity and female influence, we see how influential our our imahos were and we also see how there were female judges and there were female nevios and we have a whole megillah dedicated to a female. So I disagree. I don't think that... What's that do with halacha? Well, that's part of our, um, our canon. It's part of our Jewish canon. And so... When you say that, do I think the origin is that only men were pushed to the top and then women were just getting breadcrumbs? I think that's what you were saying. I don't agree that. I actually think we had a, ch- a break in the chain in which we had a more um, balanced when society did that happen? early on. When do you on. think that happened? I'm not really a historian. You I think mean, like I do Rashi? Have, you think like a thousand I, years ago Rashi? I don't or totally know. Like... I do have a master's in medieval literature, but I really can't answer you uh, so well. So I'm is, not no, but here's my question. My qu- <laughs> no, no, no simply. I do, From yes. Where? No, Brooklyn College. That's pretty amazing. Oh, wow. Thank you. Very amazing. Um, no, but I would say in the what you're saying is, and it, I agree with you. There's four imohos, three avos, and from the beginning of time, right? There was Chava and and um, and and Adam. and Adam, whatever. I'm I'm, I'm an Amar, so I'll tell you straight up. Um, but, but you didn't same, think you were an Amar, it's about time, halacha. Like no, I am an Amar. hundred percent, I'm an Amar. hundred percent, I'm an Amar. He's a dying though. He I am an Amar, but I think on basic oh, principles shock. of certain yeah. things, I'm able to hold. Okay. So what I would say <laughs> is, is that. Um, what you're saying is is not necessarily have anything to do with halacha. The fact that there is imahos and avos and they operated in a in a quote unquote equal way. Um, Leah and Rachel did not have the same didn't have the same things that they were doing that Yaakov and Yitzchak and all the others were doing. Not, not everyone was doing the exact same thing. It's not how it worked, you know. So because of that. 
No, but it's more about the fact that we have a frame of reference for what empowered femininity looks like without us questioning the person's intentions. Like a lot of a lot of psukim get hijacked. He ne Sarah ba'ohel. It simply means, and behold, Sarah was in the tent. But somehow that has been co-opted to mean that you know uh, a, a woman's beauty is when she's more hidden. So you're but arguing with no basically one, you're basically no arguing with that. like the gedolim. Like you're basically arguing with we show it on the and, no, and I just want to know. Every, okay. No, no, but not, I just want to make sure we're on the same not page. Not every commentary on hine Sarah ba'ohel is one in which women are told to hide. Only the ones. But that what about the ones right that now? are from a thousand years ago? The standard. Uh, we showed him a chronom and all, all the big adolim say that. So why would we go with the one off shoot who's maybe well, the you apparently have? multiple mefarshim. It's just there are certain ones that stick and the ones that the, stick tend to be misogynistic. The, uh, so you're basically arguing with the, with, with, with no. a lot of, the, you're basically arguing with the base like the Ramban, the Ramban, like all those people you have an opinion on of what, how, how they... Specifically, no, I am not different. I, I don't have a difference of opinion. I radically accept whatever their opinion is. So then... And I also believe Acharei Rab and Lahato. And I also believe in Teku. So between all of these things, just, I am just mentioning that my Flappish Girl commentary is that there are some things that are imbalanced and unfair between yeah. men and women in the current day, you know, you know, reflection of, of Orthodox society. Does that mean that I want to dismantle it? Does it mean that I don't listen to it? Do I mean, do I, does it think, do What do we I, do about it? What can we do about it? We no, can, I'm asking you, what do we do about it? So I think we need to start by addressing the worst manifestation of this issue, right? Because we could debate from here till tomorrow whether Kol Isha is important, whether women's representation in magazines is important, whether whether EMTs within our local community should have women and men working together, or there should be a you know a phone number for women. We should have maybe women uh, on the. Uh, you you understand? What I'm saying there's not as much women in this in these spaces. Okay. And so let's address the the topic in which this is so pressing, which is the Aguna crisis, because this is the real manifestation of these issues. Okay, it's the most serious manifestation with the most serious consequences. Why do you think? And the one that we can really all can like, push question? away our differences to agree to speak about. As you can see, like we're here at the same table yeah, talking sure. about. Can it. I just ask one question? Why do you think that the Aguna crisis itself is based on a manifestation of those issues? Because there's an imbalance of power between a woman's freedom and a male's freedom. The number one way that you see this is in the Hetar Mea. If a woman is for whatever reason not accepting her get and he wants to move on with his life, he just needs the signature of 100 rabbis, 30 from three different continents, which is very easily done nowadays through DocuSign. DocuSign is an acceptable way to obtain these signatures. And you can walk away free, marry another wife, have more so kids. we're back to halacha, just so I clarify. We're back to not agreeing with halacha. Is... Um. So the this, this is Maya within halacha. Is, she's saying. I, what do you mean? I'm. I'm not saying. So she wants I'm to be for a woman. I also, that has to be halacha. It. I'm saying I would like to raise awareness about what a hatermeya is and the fact that it's not really fear that men have a way out and women don't. But it's like what You're, I said. You're trying to equate halacha to what makes sense to you. You need to walk away from that. You don't like that. No, but it is the halacha. Not. No, no, no. That's a cop out answer. Saying this is the policy is not recognizing so that where there change? is a rabbinical so will, there to... is a rabbinical way. Again, so you want to okay. change the halacha? In your, in your, in no, your... I do not want to change the halacha. There are plenty of sources in which halachos allow us methodologies to free women, except we have decided that they're too outdated to study and to apply okay. now. Can you can you give examples? Of that? Sure, I could, but please. Yeah, sure. So there's a concept called mum gadol. A mum gadol is if at the time of the marriage ceremony under the chuppah, something was withheld information from the wife, either on purpose or by mistake, then she can go and have her marriage contract dissolved because she is saying that she was sold a false, false. bill of goods. Megachtos. No, not mekachtas, mum gadol. Okay. okay. Mum gadol. So that's an example of a methodology that has been used. And if you look at Rev Moshe Feinstein's responses and his chuvos in Igaris Moshe, there were 11 times in which he applied different methodologies to dissolve marriages under extreme circumstances. Okay. I'm not saying women should walk around dissolving their marriages no, as if they're getting their but hair you done, brought up, but it's an option for emergencies. 100%. So what you brought up, I would agree with. 100%. You brought up something that has backing, Torah source backing, that Moshe Feinstein, right, signed off on. 
there are two ways in order to, I think, change a society, right? You can either change the laws of the society or you can change the ways that the laws itself are being given over, right? So two different, there are two different ways in terms of like, let's say the Aguna crisis, right? Or, you know, women versus men, women and men equally and separate or not separate or equal completely, right? It's not, from my perspective, I'll say my perspective, it's not that the laws of the mission of Brewer are outdated, it's that the people that are giving them over are giving them over in crumb ways. That is so, what I've been trying to so say, and you so, summarized it very so well. So that's two different things, though. That means that the halachos and the laws of the mission of Brura are not the things that are to be changed. It, mean, it means that the things no that one, are able that means that the things that are able to be done should be done, and that the rabbis are failing, which we completely agree with. Well, there's exactly. a couple things. Well, well, hold on. I, I have to categorically disagree with you. Oh, you disagree with me? <laughs> in, in, go a, ahead. in a sense. In a, in, go, go, go. In a sense. Go. No, I'm not. It's in a different way than you're going to think. I'm going to yeah, explain. Yeah, go ahead. Do you know the most famous thing about the Vilna Gon, in comparatively to his greatness? They say that he's like Rechaim Velazhin, right? His his level of greatness was unparalleled in his particular era. No one that no one in his era was able to make a decision that the Vilna Gon was able to make. They say the same thing about Ramosha Feinstein, that he was a Risha. No one in the last 300 years up to Lavil Nagon, people say, were able to make the decisions and the Psaks that Ramosha Feinstein was able to make. And what you don't understand is that you're dealing with Eishashesh. Eish it's the most serious uh, right. issue in the Torah. Hold on. It's the most serious issue in the Torah. And what you're also not understanding, and you could say that this is an issue within Torah and Allah, and this is actually a more, I, I'd love to have this topic more because I don't understand it, that women don't get the opportunity for this. But you're, you don't understand the depth of Torah. You've never really sat there and heard in it and learned in it and, and went back and forth on, on, on 17 different Rishonim on how something comes out to be and what, what the right uh, conclusion is to come to something. So to you, it's a very simple thing. Let's just come up with an answer. The problem is you're dealing with a very, very serious issue. And I'm not saying to come up with an answer. Would you disagree? You said you would disagree with me. What that you, you were saying they're abundant are failing based on this particular issue that they're not figuring certain, out a way out of this. In certain ways. They, no. they don't feel confident enough that they have the in ability certain, to do certain, it. Yeah, right. Certain times. But, I, I, but Ramosha being able to do it, he was the right, only right, person right. that I, I, no, I understand no, what you're no, saying. No, 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 no. So that's where you're wrong. There are probably 200 books that list probably 20,000 sources in which this methodology has been used in numerous ways. Mum Gadol is only one aspect of being able to do bits of Have you ever sat down with the Rav and gone through a real yes. subya? Yes. Who have you said I that? Have. With? Who? I would rather not say their names. Why not? Because I like to keep people's private well, yeah, information well, confidential. Okay, I can't. Do you think she's lying? I, she's yes, I've, I, it depends who the Rav is. What does that mean? I, it's a totally I've different been thing. Learning, I've, been learning Rav. I've, no, I've been learning Gitin, not necessarily always, you know, inside the primary source, but through photocopies and through reading a, a lot of a lot of academic, you know, compilings of responses that have been written over thousands of years. And Rev. Moshe Feinstein is not the only person who applied these methodologies. Who's the person before in the current day generations that done it or in his generation that ever did it? There are a lot of names actually. And the rabbi the in Eretz Yisrael are actually doing it as we speak. Because when they are dealing with a get refuser who will not come to Basin or who is constantly changing the reason for why he's withholding Isn't the Isn't Rev. Shafran the, number, Shafran the number one guy that does this stuff, that's involved in this stuff? No, there's so many. There's, he's like there's the hundreds goat. of rabbis. Okay. We have he's just one person. Okay, we had Nechaman, and she specifically went out there to go get a Psaqvia because he's like the guy that everyone relies on, and he won't do what, won't do what you're saying he should do. Because he doesn't, it, it's not a simple thing. You're making it sound like, oh, I have emotions, I want this woman to be free, which by the way, I do as well. I just want to clarify. Like, like, it's not an emotional desire for me to want to free a woman. It's a very clinical one in which I want to apply the same methods that are being clung to in, in, in Gitin, but I want to offer additional solutions to their repertoire, to their to their skill of tool, to their toolbox. They they are only they're limiting their own tools that they can do to free a to free. Do you think they're doing it on purpose? I don't think they're doing it on purpose. So then why are they doing it in your opinion? That's a great question. No, I'm saying you think they're just like not trying, think? they just don't give a shit. Well Meaning I'll, I'll tell you something. I'll, I'll tell you honestly. What bothers me and what this is what he was saying before. Right, the issue, the area that we align on significantly, and why I'm happy you're here, is that I think that I granted I give the rabbanon the respect that they feel, which is what they believe that they don't have the ability to nullify a marriage. In they don't believe they have that koach. They're not confident enough in whether or not you don't agree with the yeshiva mentality that you use adoros, and we don't agree, we don't believe we can change or do what let's say Ramosha did or the Vilna Gaon, etc. We could talk about that all day for the next. But the bottom line is they don't feel confident confident enough to do it. What I think the the, the 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 travesty is about it is specifically that they're not 
doing what is within their power, which is to ostracize the family and take as strong of a stance and, and bring it to the forefront like they did mental health or, or to some to a large degree, uh, the molestation situation, at least to a much bigger degree than it was, they're not approaching the, the, the Aguna crisis in that same exact format. They're shying away from basically saying that if it is clear to us in Basin, if it is clear to us that you should be giving your wife again and you are not any, the, the person themselves will have no refuge within our community anywhere. If the family or any other person involved is involved in their case or helping them in any way, they will also have no refuge. There hasn't been a cold call yet to date or a very clear uh, stance to make that very clear. So to me, there's no excuse for that. You're a leader, you have the power to do that un uh, unquestionably. That That's where I'm in agreement with you. So if you want to focus more on the methodologies we can use, which don't have any level of controversy, right? Such as the community taking an excommunication, you know, you know, prescription more seriously, or, you know, ostracizing different family members, you know, whatever it is that you were suggesting. Um, I just feel that you're not going to the root issue. And the root issue is that very often these husbands who withhold gets are never going to come to the table. There are some of these extreme situations. I'm talking about the most extreme situations. I'm talking about, in my personal opinion, Wasserman, Sherabani, Mayor Kin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are men who, you, it doesn't matter what you do to them. Okay. So the Rabbanim are powerless, the but they just yeah. perceive that they're powerless. They can just open up a book that, the, and review all of the ways in which women were freed in the it's, past. It's a sentence like that that makes them totally write you off. I'm just being totally honest. I, I'm being, I'm being, it, it's okay. not, and you can open people up a book. It doesn't work that way. You're, 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 you're not you, understanding you to Torah look, and Allah. You're not understanding the very. I am. I have a whole library devoted to ways in which Gitin has been applied through different centuries and through different parts of the diaspora. So academically, you're, you're incorrect. There are many, and even currently, these methodologies are being used in some of the most learned environments and very often they're being done on the down low because people are scared of their public reputation. Did you just give Rabbanim and people that are doing this? I'm, I'm genuinely curious. I could, I'm happy to send you a list right after our meeting, sure. Yeah, please, I, no, I want to read it off. Who's famous that's doing this? Who's well-respected within the yeshiva world that's following basic Torah hashkafa for the last 2,000 years that's doing this? That's not like a random offside person that's... that's, that's that, that, that's making Ivanka Trump from like like I'm just trying to understand like no they're not they're not they're and I know, by the way I'm not even talking about the case I'm just saying that's a random offshoot person that's like uh, Haskell what's his name Lookstein whatever his name is know. he's known for making Carly Claus from whatever I can, I, that's outside the purview of standard Orthodox Jewry like so it's a very dangerous term to say that there's a standard Orthodox Jewry and I think that goes against what your whole podcast thesis is. Your how do you know whole, my podcast? How do you your know whole my whole mission podcast? statement? Know, so your whole so mission statement. Go ahead, go ahead, you're right. Your whole mission statement is about being mislabeled and not having to be in the confines of a box and not judging people and just having more connection with our fellow Jews who may, you know, come from different backgrounds. And I think that to say that there's only one clear cookie cutter way that a leader you know would qualify him as 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 the right person and the right messenger to uh, to apply these methodologies is really inconsistent with your other messaging okay hold so on I, so, one second so i would say two different one one thing for our podcast from my perspective the idea that people are imperfect doesn't take away the idea that there are laws and their traditions Torah's still perfect one second <laughs> that doesn't take away i'm imperfect i live my life a certain way because of that a lot of people do a lot of people a lot of people struggle with then trying to be perfect, which then stops them from even doing the things that they would be doing. Okay. That doesn't make the actual laws and the halachos and things of that nature and Torah to be changed in order to make myself. It's not changing or, halacha. Or to make my, or It's make, not or to, changing halacha. I'm just saying the juxtaposition. It's utilizing between... existing halacha. There's umdana. There's... There's so many ways. There's there's Sveik Sveika Dedina. There's so double you think, Why do you think the rabbis are not using these things? Right. So I think it has to do with who our community decides to label as a leader. I think it comes down to us really buying into our leaders being people who play by the book, politically play the right moves, align with the right donors, align with the right yeshiva system. And, and we have basically become our own worst enemy as a people in which we give power into the hands of people who really can't be trusted with it, who are more concerned about their so titles 
than they are about the people. So I think there's two things right there, right? So we're giving, us as people are governing ourselves in order to put people into power that are going, that, that you are saying are not doing the right job. What makes you believe that we can then do that same thing again and put another person into power that's going to do the right thing? By redefining what we decide as leadership. Leadership is having broad shoulders. On? What do we redefine broad it based on? Broad shoulders. On? Nothing to do with halacha? Of course, broad shoulders to carry the truth of halacha to the people and to stand firm in their psak din without backtracking. So there have been what many is carrying the truth? Does carrying the truth making people, making everyone happy is carrying the truth? No, it's not about making people happy. It's about being accurate. I'm okay. not, hold on a second, two things. First of all, I'm not in disagreement with you about a lot of things you just said, but what makes yeah, you think carrying the truth is your truth? The things I you think are the truth. Ma- I never said it has to be mine. So, so why can't both things be true? Why can't a lot of the the gedolim in place? And by the way, we always talk about this all the time that the, having the name rabbi in front of you makes makes the makes, yes. We, 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 makes, I, I'm, there's I'm, a, it's been a diluted. I, I'm it's a very diluted much in. Name I, I don't point. have a problem. I yes. still do believe that the real gedolim in Kol Yisrael, aka Shmuel Kamenetsky, the big dogs, those are people that I do hold reverence for. And I would listen to what they say. I would not and just Kanievsky. be like, well, he passed away. I know, but he was. Yeah, I'm just saying, Rebel, 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 I'm, was around. I'm just saying, yeah, these are these are pretty big giants. I, I wouldn't just like personally just not listen to them. The idea that Rabbi Moshe Feinstein did, a, I had a tshuva Moshe where he had 11, Moshe. had 11 tshu, right tshuvas. The idea that because Rabbi Moshe Feinstein did it at his time, therefore there, we can, we, it's something that's open that we're able to do now, I think is a misconception. Not everyone's are, the, most, everyone's are Moshe Feinstein. But the whole beauty of Yiddishkeit is that we look at answers from previous gedolim and we then do. we apply them we do, in order but we to also, ensure the sanctity of our community. We do, we do but we and also we have, have to have those gedolim amongst us. through the cracks, we also, then we're not maintaining our community. But we also have to have those gedolim amongst us in order to make those decisions. And there is a con- concept of Yerida Sidoros. And... When those when those people make those decisions, there's holding to those decisions. Do you think Regardless people nowadays, do you think the gedolim nowadays are as great as, say, Moshe Rabbeinu? But why do I have to? Why do I have to? I'm bringing out a concept. that gap of such such people who are so far. That's yeah, a bit extreme. No, it's not. I'm bringing out a concept that over three thousand years, the concept of years are those is specifically that. That the same way you could understand very clearly how Moshe Rabbeinu, or even even further back as the thousand years Rashi or whatever, was a thousand. Well, they found the go, and we couldn't. The reason they were able, able to make. Of, make by the way, certain... a lot of Orthodox Jews don't believe in your doors. I know okay. that's. I, I know that's how. I, I, I don't shape, know how, based on the question I, I just asked you, how how you can not fully believe on that. You yeah. would agree with me straight up. I'm that pretty sure Moshe Feinstein learned Shaz more times than Moshe Rabbeinu. Like it's it's that has it's nothing a weird to do with concept. anything. No, greatness. that's not. That's, that's not. That's, that's, a bigger, that's a bigger. That's a bigger. That's nothing to do with innate with innate with innate greatness. Yeah. The Torah gives us all the resources. There's enough. There's enough secondary sources, first sources that show that you can free an aguna, that, and it is complete malpractice to go into an emergency room, aka a basin, and to be told that they don't have an epipen. It's like saying we're we're not it, like the the mashal is the nimshal is imagine a basin is these are the first responders the dayanim are the first responders and imagine going into a hospital and saying oh yeah we decided to shelve the epipens but you know the formula for I an disagree. epipen I, why don't you use it I think the it? form of oh, epipen we forgot it we I, don't know how to use it we don't know how to apply hold it Hold on I disagree with you I think the They're form playing of playing dumb I think do you why do you, would they play dumb hold on why would they play dumb that's all I want to understand you you haven't answered that question truly it's very, very layered, and I don't want to say things that are just going to sound crazy. I mean, I think well, a right. lot of it is internalized misogyny, in which if you have no female representation in a basin, a lot of the policies occur within a vacuum. And just like as Jews, we like having Jewish representation and a scun. What do you mean by re- but what do you mean by representation? Representation. Like Dayanim? No, that not are necessarily Ju- Dayanim. No, maybe a Toenas, someone who just helps in Aguna and advocates for her. So when the Dayanim are, let's say, throwing terms at her and she's getting confused and she is about to sign a paper that shows she's going to okay. sign away her rights right. for her. More kid. education, okay. Just, right. you know, more education. And also, yeah, Fair. that's a great word also. In the Beis Yaakov system, why did I have to learn Hilchas Kashras and the Lam Tetz Malachos a thousand and one times, but no one ever told me what my kasuba actually says. I signed my tanam in my kasuba, and I thought it was just normal to not know what I was signing when I was signing a contract having to do with my my whole life. Why are girls not given access to this information? I don't think that's a we're guys given seminary. I don't think that's a be, to be fair, were guys to be given honest. access to that? But the guys just, have the upper hand yeah. anyway, so even if they don't know how no, it works. No, I'm just saying, there's, there's everyone, no one knows Can what they're signing. Can I make a, not, not a tom, it, The whole thing's, I don't think it's a, not a tom, that's not making it better, I'm just saying. Not like, a tomfoolery of the situation, but like, we can make the same, 
argument as education in general in yeah. big in big places I was like say you know that. like in schools we teach you geography but we don't learn taxes <laughs> exactly it's not so like it's, not a, that, yeah, it's, it ju it's just an idea the fact that these are the things that are taught in exactly. schools and these things are not now maybe we should change what's no, taught because in schools. the boys are given a little bit more of an understanding of how to read aramaic how to go through a sugya uh, how to understand gitin women are purposely not given who any says of that this information who says that women can't learn one second uh, they're not one second they're not purpose i don't think they're purpose not given those tools in order to learn those things. I don't think that they're trying to be pushed down. I think that there's different things that people learn. For example, in our in 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 um in our system, I think in Chavetz Chaim at least that I went through, we don't focus on chumash as much or chumash, whatever you want to call it, right? In, or or, 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 right, right. We don't we, we, we don't we don't focus on it. And so there's a lot of people unless you do um right every single week. A lot of a lot of guys don't know basic parshio stuff. Or Navi. But, right, or Navi. Or and girls, but girls, but girls in Beis Yaakov, and that is something that's shoved down their throat, right? The, to learn a lot about that type right. of stuff. And so you guys know a ton about that. It's just the education in itself may not be the education that we all think is, you know, important and what things are focused on. But I don't think it's necessarily a thing but that women... But I think women, if it's related to a woman's future life and all the implications of what the Ksuba says. It says everything that he owes her if he divorces 100%, her. 100% women should have more, I agree with you, 100% yeah, women should have more education, education surrounding, that. Uh, surrounding exactly. their decision making. And men, and men should have more life. education 100%. surrounding Shabbos and the Allah Chazal Correct, yes, yes. Great. And men should have more education in that Sounds yes. it's not a, the point. Yeah, what, I'm not, what I'm saying is it's not a systemic issue as much as it, in terms of, not a systemic issue in terms of misogynistic versus non-misogynistic Rather than just what the practical practical stuff that's taught in schools, then maybe other things should be taught. Well, look what happens when we go based on what's practical. How is it practical if now we're dealing with a whole generation of women who don't know what their ksuba says? They don't know that they're walking into a potential trap for extortion. So, hundred percent. Why do you think it's only? But can I say two things? Um, one thing. But how much good comes from the system? Amazing good. Okay. So Why do you think I'm always, fighting to protect right. so, it? So again, there's always going to be bad in a system. And we're of not course. arguing that when it comes to the Aguna crisis, that is something that has, for some reason, whether it's based on education, whether it's based on rabbis not doing enough or whatever it is, right, that there has been an, there has been a, a, a gap in the, in the system over there. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't take the system in itself and say that the system in itself is a misogynistic system that of we need to change. Not. Okay. It's a given. Fine. Okay. There's a reason why I'm a proud from Jew and raising my children in the yeshiva 100%. system and that I fight to defend it. If I just wanted to dismantle it, I would just so find I would say ways it's more to just... discredit the entire thing. I mean, you're thing. very, so very close to the dismantling <laughs> level. I just want to, yes. Okay, no you problem. teeter. You teeter. You're very, you teeter. A, big, a big teeter. I think you can go a lot farther. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and take you on good faith that you very much are from, believe the Torah is perfect, good for you. I, I do respect that and that's, that's beautiful and I, there's undeniably good from it. Do you do you think that you you have a chance of getting the results you want in the firm world as it is today on a halachic rabbinic level going down? Not just like grassroots, like men, women, like um, you know, on the grassroots level. But do you do you think you can affect the sort of change? Do you think it'll ever actually change the way like th these are old, very yeah, learned men are... in dusty rooms somewhere like that that are that are that have a lot of power? And I'm not in an evil way. They're good people, but they're there, there, you're right. here. Are you gonna do anything? Do you think there's a chance? So I think it's really changing all over. Like I mentioned in Israel, they're, they're, uh, even the mainstream Rabbanit are undertaking these Bitzel Kedushins. You're not giving any, I don't like that you're saying this without giving any names, any references, any anything. Okay, fine. You're just throwing out things that, I, honest, no, you're saying a very broad, this is gonna be watched by a lot of people. No you're, saying a very, you're saying a very strong thing, so I'm just curious to know who, well, I just I gotta understand. Why don't I mention another halacha just while we're... Why, if you want to go be just on technicalities and things that just Not sound Not technicalities. Perfect, You're saying something you very strong. That You're saying there are people letter? in Israel being bitful... That, that are doing things that you want specifically that are extremely in the U.S. clearly not being done. I just want to know. You keep on saying it's the third time. I just want to know who is it doing is that. It is being done in the U.S. It's just they're not being done by basins that people consider to be, you know, well, from enough. From okay, enough. So who Even is if it? they're very learned. Oh. Let's say you have, let's say there's there's the international based in Tinek, which looks at the explores these methodologies in very extreme situations, and then. But, but, but will people like Nahama go to those? What they did? They're not from enough from her, she, are they? It's not. It's not that it's not from enough for her. It's that it's 
not from enough for the community, so then people are going to probably... I mean, I'm not, I can't people speak on her behalf. They'll, they'll I'm, basically I'm tell her that she's Asian Sitch. No, I get it. Like, meaning she right. might... If she wasn't fearing judgment, exactly, she would go there. She's exactly. probably desperate to go there. I mean, I don't know. I, I didn't she want her is, about it. Judgment I there. Question is, yeah, it's why is there her. judgment? It's, a, it's about uh, exactly. Well, well, a lot of what you've been saying, you sounded very judgmental about the idea of applying Betzel Kedushin. So that's what I am because the, because because the the Gedolim and, and the school of thought for the last a thousand years in Judaism, which has basic Masora that we go off and that gives us our traditions, doesn't hold by the suggestions you're you, giving. Why don't you study the halachos and then come back to me and see if you still really think that? Do you know what Umdana is? Uh, again, I don't know. I I, I I have total faith, honestly, in the real Gedolim. If they're not pulling pulling the trigger on it, I believe one hundred percent that if they could, they would. And you haven't given me a good a good reason either for why they're not doing it. You just keep saying, I don't know, it's complicated, it's this, it's that. I would say, I can't for really me, I would say. And like, like they're a bunch of savages, like they have no compassion, they don't want to do anything. I don't think that they have no compassion, I just think that they don't have broad enough shoulders to make decisive decisions that they'll have to defend when the mob comes after them. So why hasn't anyone, why do you think those broad shoulders, no one's rose up with those broad shoulders? Why? Yeah. I think that they will emerge soon and we're going to start noticing who our real leaders are. I think the fact that Rev Mendel Shafran even, you know, gave a psak fia sh without collecting any testimony from the husband is a, a monumental thing that sets major precedent where women who are summoning their husbands to basin who and the, the husbands are not coming after years of being summoned, then you can potentially issue a psak fia, whereas before Rav Mendel Shafran gave this psak, it was considered outlandish to give a psak fia if the man had never come to give any testimony. He had broad enough shoulders to say in this situation, and he wrote a 65-page psak din so can I, justifying right. how he came to that conclusion. If he wants to, he could do a 65-page psak and din even he, justifying a different conclusion and even a different he, issue. And even he was not willing to nullify the get. I don't know. The, 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 the I, I, I don't know if that's so true. Was so it that? I just want to but say, no, who says who says he was approached about that? Who says that he ever took the intake um, information needed to even explore he's that? He's never route? done it in his life. If he did, I don't know if that's true. If he did, how do you know? We don't know every aguna that ever went in with every single problem. Do you think for one second? Let me ask you a question. The Chama Wasserman, who's at the forefront of this, who's battling every single day and suffering every day to get her get. Do you think she wouldn't? try or know if that was an option? Do you think he wouldn't suggest that after she spent a God knows how much money to try to go and ask him whatever could be done? Psak via what? You think he was just sitting there like, oh, you know something? I can get you out of this, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna like, just write you up a psak via instead of like actually trying to help you and get you a, uh, get you an actual, uh, dissolve your marriage. Do you think that that's the case? Do you think that makes sense? Yeah, just because someone doesn't ask for a certain halacha to be applied, very often people don't know these halachos. These halachos no. are hidden from public knowledge. You're saying they're Mendel Shafran. Mendel Shafran is going to use those if halachos he if he could. He's not waiting for Nechama Wasserman to ask him. Really? That's why it took him two years to write a psaac Because he wasn't sure. Because he wasn't sure. No, that's he, not why. It's because of red tape and things take No, time. you have to wait time no. before you just take a, a drastic halachic measure. It doesn't work the way you think it works. You can't just you, open a book. You and like, just, correct. And write you something. are of the belief that you could open a book and make a rash decision, bam, 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 do it. That's there not the way it works. There, there, are, there so. are a lot of sources that say that anyone who extenuates the pain of an aguna by not using a makal approach is going to have to answer to their donkey. So maybe they will. That is maybe what it they says. will, but. It but says that they says, are considered who says, who says the lowest form of leaders. Just because, just the because, lowest because, form of leaders just that lead Mendel the people Shafran. to inequity just to, because they just are because callous Mendel, to the suffering of women and will say, hmm, I don't know if okay, it's so good because enough. Because Armando Shafran lasted, uh, waited two years, that means that he wasn't being makel? Right. Or was, maybe he was being the most makel and he would have waited 80 years, right. but he waited two years. I, I, That's two sides of the same coin. I, I started off by saying that it's amazing what he did and that he set so, precedent. But at the same time, there are still logistical issues in the based in system where things take a very, very long time. They do. It's not that much different than the court system in which things they are do. just broken and are schlepped out. Why should a woman so have the, to suffer for those logistical backups? So, so, so if they're logistical backups, that's one thing. But if they are backups based on Torah, that's right. another thing. Meaning. Ravindal Shepron doing it and uh, taking him two years, which got you a little bit heated. Like, why did it take him two years? Well, maybe it took him two years because he was being as makele as possible, and really it should have taken him 60 years. No, according to the sources, that's not true. It's straightforward how, halacha, how do you know and he's able to you, apply them But how do you... If they you, you are, the but what you're doing now oh, is... Oh, do you know that... One second, one second. What you're doing now is you are you are arguing with, with, with Ravindal Shepron. No, I'm, I'm, I'm... You're arguing with what he should have done. No, I'm suggesting that it's possible that Nechama's pain was extenuated and that he didn't think about that. Because of his 
inability to speak. But up he the didn't process. think about it. So you, what I you're saying say is that you I didn't say you didn't, I can't speak for what was going through his mind. But I'm you're, are, but, you're of offering, but you're offering up a solution that he didn't have or didn't use. Um, at that point in time, it was not what was on his radar to apply in that moment. So you, what you are saying is that what he did, right, is something that that he should have done something else. No, I didn't say that. I said that he should have examined the potential. And of you're saying that he that didn't else. examine that potential. Right now, at this point of time, we do not we do not utilize those methodologies as much as do you not in and the, do you not in think, the most orthodox space. Do you not think that he Ramendo Chiffron has thought about this and whether to use it or not use it? I'm sure he's evaluated it. And so what I'm saying is is that based on that based on that. Are you arguing with the fact that he didn't use it? Are you arguing with the fact that Ramendo Shafran is a human being and although he has a lot of halakhic knowledge does not necessarily mean he has the quote unquote cojones to do what is halakhically necessary, especially if it is something very controversial and because he takes Torah very seriously. But at the end of the day, he is a human. At the end of the day, yeah, he has so, biases. So at the end right. of the day, if so there are halakhic things, that, yes. if there are halakhic things in his toolbox, but they're in the no-no box that you really never use. So you're arguing, Even he might right, not oh, use them out of some emotional and okay, not purely so halakhically right. intellectual. So there's two things. So there's two things. There's your argument. Well yes, that well was said. Very well said. But you're but arguing. Also, but you're arguing that the that the number one guy in this whole space, right, is incapable because of his emotion. Incapable? No, that he has incapable, some blocks. Uh, yeah, because of his emotion. Sure. Okay. He's human so being. so so he's, he's human, human being. being. So what you're saying is is that from the top down we're fucked. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what been our, that's been No, but that's what you're saying. That's literally Change what you're saying. And if also, and if that, but if, and wait, if that's the case, one second, if that's the case, then where's the start of the argument? Meaning, like, if the case is, is that the number one guy, that's like if you're Shmuel Kamenetsky or Chaim Kanievsky well, or Bal Yashif, if, 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 if you're saying that that person, right, who most people look up to in this specific space is fucked, that everyone is. Fucked. I think that's a very extreme. But hold on one second. This all started. Sorry for interrupting you. This all started because you were basically sitting there and saying how amazing our Mendel Chevron is that he went and did this, and I brought yeah, out a point. And I went out and brought a point that even he couldn't. He was didn't have the kahunas to go and and dissolve the marriage. But and that's something know. that you were saying. Did, there, there's no. abilities to do. I don't and, believe he ever even examined it. That's, so, he never that's, even that's, examined it. That, that, that's taking him to be an absolute schmuck. No, that's, that's it's not. Yeah, it's it considered a, exactly how you had said. It's a you don't use that toolbox. He's a god. Don't use it. He's, a he's not so an you're idiot. Saying, you're, he's you, trying. You, that's like saying we're emotional. Hold on. A god still has. Checks and balances you, and has to answer for his okay. for his Who reasons. Says, There's a reason the psak fia has a sixty five. If a psak that wasn't from enough, there would be an uproar. This but is the ask, person that ask, she is sitting there louding as the number one. So now you're saying that the number one who has right. the baits him to go and do things that no one else will do will still he's not, not going, going far to, enough for what people want. <laughs> what? He's not number one in baits. He's number question. one in halakhic knowledge. Those are two he, different he's things. the number one willing to take. He's the number one willing to take a psak fia and do things of this nature. There's no such thing as number one. So he's too he's willing to do that, but he's too scared. Can I ask I mean, he, 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 he wasn't scared of the heat for... It's not even... Can I ask you a question? Who says he's wrong? Maybe. Maybe. Who says he's wrong? wrong Who says he's right? Right? You said that he's going to have to answer to his donkey, whatever. Right. We don't know that, right? We don't know whether he's right or wrong. So what? why we are we making... Well, a donkey. Why are we making... But why are we making the basis off the idea that he is not doing something that he's supposed to be doing? It's wrong. not him. He's just one person in a branch of hundreds of Rabbanim who are engaging with certain standards and are allowing to only include parts of the information. They're only presenting a half truth to the Agunos. And I'm not talking about every Aguna, not not every woman who wants to get out of her marriage and just go but start doing Bittal Kedushin. Right. But, 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 but when you're dealing with extreme cases, extreme cases right. where there but is no Rundle remedy Shepard, for, the are, for the Basin, right. there is no remedy for the Basin to go up against a get withholding husband who is a who is a chronic get withholder. 100%. If they don't have a remedy, there are other things in their no, toolbox that they need to take out and they are afraid to. Can I tell you something? I don't think we're going to get any farther, but I do think that this has ground to an absolute standstill. No, no, no. I'm it's enjoying good. this conversation. I, I don't it, think yeah. there's anything bad about this conversation. The Holocaust happened. I feel like I'm in sheer again. The Holocaust okay. happened. You know? Oh, we made it to the Holocaust, baby. Let's no, no, go. No, no, for sure. The Holocaust <laughs> happened, you know? How could Hashem do such a terrible thing? You know, I find myself asking Hold myself on a second. I know, but I'm not asking you. I'm asking her. Hold on. How did the Holocaust happen? 
We want Flavish Girl's answer. No, I'm to, curious. To, I'm asking for a reason. How did the Holocaust happen? No, I can't answer for that. I, I, I know you know it's something. It's not my area of expertise. Sometimes things happen in this world that are not fair and are not perfect. Okay. And, and, and there's an understanding with that that things aren't always perfect. And sometimes people are in very bad situations, and it's the Nisayon Hashem gave them, and it's not a great thing, and yet there's nothing we can do. That's a defeatist attitude. It's not a defeatist attitude. It doesn't it. mean we could change of Torah to make you can. feel comfortable. It's not changing Torah. It's applying Torah. They do it wherever but, they but can. Here's my question. There are some cases that it, it's not doable. How can you answer that they're doing it whenever they can? How many basins have you sat in during a Gittin proceeding? It's not the point. You're basically saying that the Gedolim have it out for women that they don't want to give them no. a halakhic We're not. Uh, by the way, not my argument is not, on the, is not on the grounds of the, ba of, of the base den, base den here. My... My argument specifically goes back to the Mendel Shabran thing, because I think it's a precedence thing. Meaning, if you're saying they're Mendel Shabran, and we are coming to an agreement here, I think, as a whole, that he's the number one guy in this space. I, I never said he's the number one. He is one of the most One of the most revered, revered guys in yeah. this space. He's a big space. dog. One of the most revered guys yeah. in this space. Yeah. Because he's and not that, buyable. Right, and that his, and, and that his... He's not buyable, and he's still not right, really and that his and that his and, and that what he's doing, we're still questioning. So where do you go from there? But it's not what he's doing; it's what he's not doing. But, so you're questioning what he did? No, I'm questioning why. The same difference. Not it's the same difference. Semantics. Semantics. You're okay. questioning why he did go to the bathroom, why he didn't go to the, the bathroom. The beauty of the relationship of Bnei Yisrael and their leaders is that they are allowed to ask questions. Allowed and they're to allowed ask, to challenge. We are allowed to challenge. I am allowed to People have are, reverence and derech arts for Mendel Shafran and also question what is going on and what his calculations and cheshbon are is. When he's applying different methodologies. Well said. Yes, but your conclusion. But then is your conclusion one. cannot. It's your be conclusion is that it must be he's wrong and he's not doing what he should be doing. No, that's as a opposed to flying to Israel and speaking to him and listening to what he has to say because he's probably a smart dude and he's not a dumb. Being curious is not wisdom. Being yeah. curious, being curious, one hundred percent is something that in Judaism is something that is that is promoted. that promotion should be. But there's there's being curious and then creating conclusions on your own because of your because of our own uh, nisyanos and our own issues. Why? What you don't like is something you're creating. Because that's not of. something that is in Torah at all, which is that people that are like me or you or him or the other can go around making halachos based on what we want. But it's not halachos. It's ex pre-existing halachos. That but, and then using them based on how we of. want. making making We are applying them how we want. But we have so many ways that we do that already. We have heter iska. We sell our chametz. We're right. constantly and because they, utilizing be, because methodologies. There are rabbe, because there are rabbis. Yeah. Right? That utilize those ideologies Why and methodologies. Why are there so many rabbis who allow for heter iska? And there's so, so many. Are, so, so what you're, all, all, so all what you're arguing with with the Aguna saying. crisis is the fact that there are the rabbis at the top top are not doing what they need to be doing. No, heter iska and all the things you're applying are things that big time gedolim way back allowed. Same with the methodologies I'm talking about for the Aguna crisis. Bittel Kedushin has been done by very big names. Rav Salavichik, but it's not, Rav Frank, it's not the same. Rav it's, Moshe Feinstein, it's not how the, many names do you need? And what about Rav Avadu Yosef? Do you know Rav Avadu Yosef was going under open heart surgery and the doctors told him that he might not wake up and he said, wait. And he quickly nullified a bunch of women's marriages who were Agunos because he knew if he didn't do it, no one would. Well, He's also like the greatest person in the last. There's not even anyone even close to Ravadi nowadays. But I hear you. But what came first, his his decision that he made with his broad shoulders and his beats him, or is it that the people told him he was a gadol first? Him going against the tide is what made him a gadol. Great, so you want people and to we need to elevate oh. the voices of leaders who go against the tide and show that so regardless of thing? how they are questioned for their intentions or what their agendas are, that they stay firm. And that's exactly what Mendel Shafran does. Even when people question how he came to that I don't think Mendel Shafran does it because firm. he's propped up by other people. No, exactly. So, but I'm you're saying, saying that we need to prop up other people in order to give them confidence. That's not how rabbis like Moshe Feinstein and other people create their greatness, have their greatness. Their greatness is innate. No, greatness is from, gra from God, and it's something they feel that they're able to be doing. How did you decide the that? They, Very they, often, their greatness is a reflection of the ways in which they connect with the klal, and then they they create a movement within the klal. I'm just saying one thing. No, but the decisions. But no, but the decisions. There's no very, the very decisions like, that these that, that rabbis make and people of these natures make. They don't make these decisions based on the fact that the klal tells them that you're able to make this decision. That's not true. So many most, rabbanim. Most, no, most that's rabbanim, not that's, no. The most klal. rabbanim, it is innate within their bones of how they feel their connection with God that they're able to make mm. this decision. 
That's not accurate. I disagree with That's you. That's not accurate. A lot of it has to do with the feedback that they get from the people. That There's a reason I why socks are open they'll go, they'll go as far as they can go within the parameters. Within the Torah parameters. Torah Torah but Torah is yeah. the thing they make the decision off, not what the club wants. Right. They'll look for a way out. Ramosha looked for ways out. By the way, you know how many Agunas probably went to Ramosha? Thousands well, of thousands of thousands. Probably, he probably issued 11. Right. You're probably by the way, who, right. knows, who says there was so no hard that is the issue. I'm only within. talking about the most extreme cases. I'm talking about the Wassermans and the Sherbodies but, but and the, the Mayor Kids. That, That's all I'm the talking point about. Is, Moshe Feinstein himself was able to issue 11. That was people coming, out to, uh, coming to him after the war. Right. He issued 11 total. Yeah, exactly. You just want, but but you, you're saying you you're happy with him now. Imagine you are coming out of the war and there were exactly. seven five thousand there were, there were thousands, seventy five thousand thousands, thousands. And, they only, and he only 11, did eleven. No, maybe those only eleven, 11. only happened because of someone like me that we no longer have any history of. I what? disagree with you. No, I just pressure I, I community just, pressure, yeah, community well, standards. No, I, I think the idea that the ra that rabbis in general are making decisions of that rabbis in general should not that they are. I think there are that are they are there are a lot that are making them off community standards, and I think that's those are in my idea the crumb Tell, rabbis. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Those are the ones that are making decisions because they have people coming with the them with money. Yes. That's okay. the political I people. Spoke, so you can't have both okay. sides of the same coin. Okay, no, you can't have people no, propping up a, propping up a rabbi and giving him you know self esteem right. and and confidence based off what other people are telling They're him. They're in and agreement. And then the ones that are and then the ones that are doing it are also mm -hmm. those rabbis Can that are crush. Many of them privately agree and validate that these methodologies are halachically sound but that they are too afraid to make a public statement or give any psaktin on these on these methods for so, example i spoke to a rav recently who is scheduled to be a distinguished speaker at mm -hmm. an upcoming asifa going on in flatbush at the okay. end of august yes and i called him and i said supposedly the rumor is that you are one of the most greatest experts in the area of these creative methods and will you speak about them at the Asifa? And he said, in my experience, speaking about these things publicly does not help anyone, but privately we can discuss it. Okay, what, what are your thoughts on that? Just to me, like off the cuff. That, again, it reflects an inability to handle the heat from the mob. Do you think that maybe he has a different reason than you have that's a good reason why he wasn't to do it, that he doesn't want to do it, and maybe he feels it's not the best way to go about it, and you just feel, and you just disagree with him? In what other issue do we have where where massive reach is not utilized as a way to create more education and well, awareness? Also, if I may, uh, if I may, you're you're making a good point. You're saying it might be the other thing, but mm -hmm. imagine you were an Aguna. Like See, that's what, a that's like that's dude, a that's feeling argument though. That's a feeling I argument. I love feeling arguments because 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 feel because. It's like enough is enough at a certain point. I'm no, old. Well, that's I'm that I disagree example. with. On a, no, but hold on. What makes you think? I just want to go back to this for a second. What makes you think that in this particular about. case, that's the 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 best method? I, what's the reason why he told you that he doesn't feel it's good to do it in that format? Why do you think? Did he tell you? No. Did you ask him? No. Why didn't you ask him? Because it's unspoken and understood. Maybe that's he's bought. Weak. Yeah, maybe it's like a mental maybe, maybe, maybe he's bought. <laughs> No. Maybe it's like How a mental you know? Even if he was bought, let's say, right? So maybe he's bought or maybe he's afraid of the pushback. That just shows Why that wouldn't you? So what I'm saying, our leaders my point of that is, is can't that we say can't say publicly what they think my, privately. Right, so, but my point of the bought thing was in terms of propping up leaders and giving them confidence in order to create certain things, you can't have your cake and eat, eat it too. You can't give rabbis and certain people self-esteem and confidence from the claw because the claw believes in them now. And therefore, they should Call make certain governing, they, them uh, governing them and deciding that they should be doing certain things, because those are the that's the exact recipe that is What's creating the crumb rub and and the crumb rubs. Mm -hmm. So you can't have both. No, uh, a rub that's not at the true. end of the day has to come innately from themselves. There really has to be an innate they humility, be humility, they humility, be a and false humble. Mashiach? No, not a false. Not, not, no, 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 a not a self. Not a self. There is balance. There's in a the balance. World. There's balance in two. There's, ba there's balance. You all the way You get smicha. You get no. There no. No. You get no. You get you get smicha from. The, you get the proper smicha. You learn the proper the proper ways in order to govern. Okay. Right yourself and others around you, okay. and based on that, throughout throughout through hum, humility and humbleness. And gratitude and other and other things that are not taught, okay, to Rabbeim nowadays, 
right? People that are just going and learning your idea for seven whatever years and deciding for themselves that they can now, because they're a sixth grade elementary school Rebbe and then they become a 12th grade Rebbe and then they become a Rav, that they know, no, those people, the, that's the reason, that system right there, that's the system that's at that's That at you're fault. on point with. <laughs> that's the system that's at fault, right? The idea of Rabbeim, the people that we need in order to, I think that I agree with you that we need Rabbeim with kahunas and things of that that's nature. That's greatness though. And, but, I, but I think that the way of getting there the way that we have, we have two different buses of getting That's there. That's fine. Your Great way, that your, we'll get two buses your, there. Your bus of, of getting your bus of getting there is the clown and the community propping someone up in order to give the person the confidence in order to make decisions that are hard, right? I believe that that's a not a good way of doing it. Okay. Because I'll, I'll, but I, in an ex, I'll explain why because that's the same coin that creates right the rabbis in the first but that's place that's exactly what we believe in but judaism we, don't we believe, believe that a person who might innately be a russia and a murderer goes into medicine and does operations but we don't and surgery but we don't innately believe that the cloud props their it up in a positive way right. but we don't innately so, no, believe that just the cloud like props there is the vulnerability for corruption through the community yes, are, supporting the establishment and certain leaders there's also the capacity for tremendous justice and righteousness yes. so but that coming but from but that gov- but that being than me but that being, no but we that being governed tackle the aguna 100%, crisis but that being governed by the things. community sure. we can both tackle the aguna crisis through, 100% through different what I'm, means what i'm saying is we that we don't have to see eye to eye on the whole part of it i hear i agree <laughs> that we should, that we can have different means i'm just saying at the end of the day the idea of people governing themselves and then propping up a leader in order to make sure that they're getting what they want from that government is in itself a crumb way of making a leader but a I, leader is not made by the people. That's not how it's made. A leader in itself is an innate... A it, leader is made by a person indicating their willingness to take a heating, to take a beating and to take abuse. When we see how Moshe was was beaten for, for standing up for someone else, you know, it, it just shows that when you stand up for someone and you take the heat, that is what leadership is. That's my definition of a leader. I, but Doing I think innately right it comes from God, cost. too. But you can. But it's very meaning the rap people didn't people no didn't problem. say Moshe go up and get the luchos. Hashem did. It's two different things. Okay, that's fine. They don't that's have to. Be, they big, don't have to be mutually. Exclusive. But that's a very big. That, but they don't a, have to be mutually. It, I, but that's a very. But they're two. That's a. It's a very important point. It's two very different. When was things. the last time Hashem told anyone to do anything? Though he's not exactly so speaking to us. So now what? What are we? Are okay, we so, that, come so, from? So, so then God's the, not coming down. So, right, with so, then, right. So then let me talk. God's not coming down. Let me talk. God's not coming down with a boss call in the past. Then you get into the argument. I know what you're saying, and then you get into the argument. Get into the argument of how do you get anywhere with Rabbeim or anywhere when you re- with Uriah Zadoros if we if we don't have boss calls nowadays, and we don't have God sp- specifically talking to us. But I think that you are you are not hearing that she's not saying that a guttle is just propped up by other people. She's saying that human beings, some human beings become leaders. They become this concept in Judaism called a guttle, and they don't exist in a vacuum. They exist within the social milieu. I probably mispronounced that word, but the social context okay. of their of their context. So if you change the community and what the community demands, what the community wants, then you have changed the context which creates those gedom. Those gedom might behave halachically different it's because a they came loop. in a different context. Exactly. <laughs> Again, I respect the the want in general uh, for societal change. Like I, I understand yeah, that. Yeah, the fire when sh- when shit is wrong. I like appreciate it. I'm just saying. I'm just going down to like the meat and bones of like what we what we believe what I, we that's I, it. Like just, it's a conversation. Just to end this particular Not, point, just to end this particular point, I happen to think you have I'm just gonna be honest, you're you're pulling like uh concepts and ideas from like Torah, which are they're very uh surface level. I'm gonna be totally I don't mean to be disrespectful in any way, they're extremely surface level like opinions of like what you saw in like Shemos. Like that's not like there's like a hundred mafarshim on what every single Pusik means and what's actually happening. It's just it's a very no, general thing. I'm talking thing. about the responsa and chuva literature that has come out of the diaspora, which is hundreds of precedents which allow for I'm bitul kedushin you, through the examples. means of mum gadol and umdana. Yeah, same thing. And it's the same idea. You you haven't yet to explain why our mental shafran and the big people have yet to use any of the things you're talking about, and any of the people that are big gadolim and orthodox Jewry have yet to use why is anything there a- you're talking about. They've none, and even the people you think are the biggest have yet to use 
anything you're talking about. You're not willing to give any names. Some of I'm them just being do honest. use it. They do use it, but it's a secret Shh, because secret. they're afraid. Well, I, I, they're so, afraid of the judgment. Uh, okay, so I, 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 we wouldn't know about who those people are because those women would be remarried. They'd be popping out kids. Everything would be up and run. Yeah, but I, you don't know how persons get came about. You don't know the details of a different of each person's get. You don't. It's not hanging in their living room. It, it would be if that was. I'm there, curious, are, there are many women who have been before, released I don't through believe bits of Which, Bastons? Who? Who? There are many people that there get are, married. They're not standard for. But what's Bastons. the definition of standard? How does something become standard? Okay, so so this is where we get back into what I was I was getting re into. I'm all for changing the community and trying to change standards. I really, really am. Honestly, I'm not someone that. Clearly, uh, is someone that I'm clearly not someone that asks anyone anything. I kind of do my own thing. I say what's on my mind. You're taking on a very audacious goal, one that honestly, in its core essence, I could respect. You're trying to make change, and you're trying to make good change, and I believe you're trying to do it ultimately for a good reason. The, the problem that I have, though, and I'm curious to hear your take on it, and I'm listening with open ears, is that you're trying to get the ears and the attention of people and create change in an environment that a lot of those people perceive you to be extremely disrespectful towards uh, a lot of those a, a lot of your actions have shown to be disrespectful towards them and when you're trying to make change and you're actually trying you're not aligning yourself with the people that you're trying to change and the worst way to ever get someone to change is by not aligning yourself with them and i'm trying to understand what your goal is by trying to change, I'm not trying to change anyone because I'm on air dropping F-bombs. I got no business trying to change anybody. I don't try. And if I do, I'm aligned with them in the alignment. I'm like, guys, I'm on your team. Let's make this happen. You're not on their but team. But you are trying to make change. Think about all the amazing messages you give out on your podcast where you're challenge people asking people to challenge their their assumptions about about life or about social relationships. You, that's not rabbinic. That's not, change. But I'm not aligning. That's a form I, but you're of trying change. to change the rabbinic industry. I'm, I'm not, not. I'm not trying to change it. I'm trying to appeal and ask for them to reintroduce methods that their ancestors used to free but my you're sisters. Not, but your actions overall over a long course of time are not in line with a way that's going to appeal to them that's or a way that's right. respectful I don't have to be. I don't have to be reflective of a perfect messenger. I'd like to say that I don't know really a lot about halal, but just in general, my my conversation with you was based upon the idea of traditional uh, uh, traditional values, whether it be Judaism or American or anything else, and how to and how we view them and how we view the system, and then how do we break it down in terms of how to create it better going forward. And I don't think a way to do that. Personally, just to summarize for myself, I don't think a way to do that is to take the system and say that the system itself is flawed, but in but but rather to look at how the system is being implemented, which I agree with you on. Now, the question is, is how is the system going to be implemented and how to implement it properly that is a Torah halachic way? Not just implementing it in a way that we believe is going to cure, you know, bandage so a I've band bandage. A band -aid. So uh, I've use, it, use it as a bandage or a band-aid. Because right, halacha so can be used as a bandage or a band-aid because the actual root issue will always still be there. Meaning, if we're giving out gets and giving out things because we are creating loopholes, or we are creating it's not a loophole, or or whatever, okay, fine. Or if we're, you know, if we're getting over, if we're getting rabbis to be on board, right? That may that even though there are other rabbis that are much higher than them or much greater than them, there aren't as on board. They're giving out gets. I don't think that's necessarily the way to get to our, you know. Great. So let's take space. two different buses to the same destination okay. and we'll be able to transport double the amounts of people who need to hear the awareness and the education. Yeah. I don't think it's... A, I yeah, want to answer you another thing. Matter. We, we don't Here. have to give like her work a rating. Necessary. No, it's not a rating. No, it's not I just rating. think, a I think your well, message you're is a warning, a... Shelley. You're not going to be successful. She no, I think your message is a very important message and I'm simply trying to understand... One, I'm simply just trying to understand one... I'm just trying to understand one very simple thing. Like why you're... Like I... I would have thought that if so I you know. basically want me to be a chameleon. No, I don't want you to be a chameleon at you all. You want me to I pretend just, to be something I, I'm not. I, you, you're just. You want me to be scared of the word. No, you're mislabeled. playing both sides. You're playing both sides. How many times you're going to use them as labeled words? <laughs> you're on time we appreciate. Five. We appreciate it, but like <laughs> branding. Saying, you're branding. On, you, you're you're just. 
you're pretending to know. You're, you're saying you know halacha. You're, you're. I don't know all halacha. You're, 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 you're playing aspects. multiple different sides because people are complex labels. Again, you again, you're, you're 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 really Reform Judaism or conservative Judaism and claiming that you're Orthodox and you want the respect of the Orthodox community even though you're really conservative. First of all, <laughs> like, I'm I just trying to understand that. First of all, I identify as an Orthodox from Jew. I identify as a fish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm basic, I'm basic. Go ahead, you actually found that funny. I did find it funny. It funny. Okay, I didn't find it funny. Yeah. Listen, he I'm found, a jokester. He found I find it, things funny. He found the schlong thing funny too. He found my schlong Look, response yeah, hilarious. Yeah. Okay. As did, by the way, at least 50,000 people. Okay, just because someone finds it funny doesn't mean it's... Come on, you laugh. Some people find it funny, some people laugh. don't. It's just the way it is. Oh, come on, you totally laugh. Not everyone I, laughs at everything. A person can laugh to themselves, but in, if in their laughter they... They, they hurt and pain a whole group of minorities, then that's a very selfish thing to do. Can I ask you a question? So Let's, you were laughing and there was nothing wrong with your laughter, but it was a very yeah, selfish laughter. Right. Let me ask you a question. Let's say 95% of people found it funny, but 5% of people didn't and were hurt. Well, Jews are much less than that kind of, you know, rep, you know, in the demographics that they are. They're less than 5% of any population. And we no, ask, I'm talking about within Jews. We ask for accommodation. Within Jews. Within Jews. I'm talking about in this case, within Jews. Let's no, say I know. And I'm saying that since when do we not help and uh, since when are we not sensitive to the minorities so any we're told to be sensitive to orphans and to almanos but they're minorities within the cloud so any single thing that may offend someone else even if it's a perceived of, uh, offense absolutely not you can't do absolutely so who not. said it's an offense specific categories that have to do with women being objectified and sexually harassed i don't okay i mean it was I, that's a, that's a I, personal opinion it real the the person who came into my live uninvited and flashed himself without me giving the consent for that, that's a form of digital harassment. Oh, I didn't disagree with that. And 100% is a form of harassment. That has nothing to do with me. Funny, that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> but when you find it funny, you normalize other people's reactions to think that it's okay because at the end of the day, no. it's just no. going to be no. laughter. That. No, I never said, never said it was okay. That is a things terrible, can be, terrible. Things can be funny and not okay. But when you at, but when you laugh, you're modeling the response that you think is no, allowed not or necess okay. Not necessarily. Laughter comes from many different places. So did you, ma ma did you laughter mention come the from shock. La la laughter come from shock. Laughter can come from something being, you know... Um, people laugh at Leviathan. People laugh in multiple, people laugh in multiple so, different areas. So then... So then just tell me. I make were a million you, Holocaust jokes. Are you laughing jokes. because... I make a million Holocaust jokes. I think the Holocaust's the, okay. Well, the difference no. is is that you probably have ancestors who went through it. So what? But unless you're actually I never a went victim through it. of I never sexual went through abuse... It. I never went through it. I'm not a victim of the Holocaust. You are. It's I'm like not. I am absolutely not. I will say this right now. I am absolutely not, and it's not in my psyche. All of it is my fine. Friend, <laughs> I absolutely am totally, in every way possible, completely... Uh, like detached from it, I don't know really? anything about it. I feel so connected. I, I mean, not, I feel not, like not that I don't know anything about there. it. I have a ton of I stories. Feel like I was my parents are gonna kill me. My parents are gonna kill me. I swear. Well, but your grandparents I, were in my grand. All my grandparents were in were in Auschwitz, Birkenau, were were in concentration. All of them. Buddy, you got okay, one second. One second. Oh, hold up. No, hold up. They, I absolutely do there. You don't, you don't know how many times I've eaten stale bread in my life because my mother won't throw it out, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but what I'm saying is, is I don't feel any sort, any sort, a one iota, okay? And this is Din and me, towards the Holocaust or not towards the Holocaust. Okay. I make jokes. Okay. I make jokes about it, but that doesn't mean that I don't, that I don't think it was a terrible thing and I don't have any empathy towards my grandparents well, because of it. But I still, at the same time, will make tons of jokes about it. If someone is the way laughing it is. It's at a way, it, it's a way for people. It's a coping to laugh mechanism. At. There are a lot of ways to cope. So, in, so there's ways to cope. There are things, things that Everyone are. Anyone can do any on, coping mechanism that they feel will help them process. Yeah. But I don't recall ever hearing the mislabeled Instagram account indicate that they were laughing at the person who exposed themselves to me and other minors in the room. There were there were minors in the room who have willingly given testimony that they're minors and it was it was across different there states are streakers as well. down times square that i'm laughing the hell at okay but just because so but why didn't you give a disclaimer that you, your laughter is a coping mechanism it's not I'm a coping not, mechanism it's not what it is it i think that actual that actual thing that's happening is hilarious i think things that are that are oh what's the word i oh i used to use it all the time that are Inconsistencies in society, inconsistencies in anything in life, I find a lot of times to be hilarious. It is an inconsistency. But you're laughing at Listen, the expense of no, someone 100%. else. No, hundred percent, I am. A hundred percent, I am laughing at not at the expense of another person, but rather at the person that's doing it. I'm laughing at his hilarity, not at the expense of what he's doing to other people. Two sides of the right, same coin. Point. I'm not laughing at the fact that that person's in pain. I'm laughing at that person's stupidity.
Okay. That's completely different. Okay. Okay. I'm not laughing at the fact that you are getting a schlong Some in your face. I am laughing at the fact that that guy decided to put a schlong out, total moron. It's a totally different but to thing. to me, your laughter about his That's action you. is what normalizes him to do it no, in the I, first I, I'm place. Not, I'm not normalizing it. If you it. didn't find it funny, maybe he wouldn't do it next no, time to I don't another think that, unsuspecting that's... victim. Uh, but but that's, that's like such a far reach. but that's like but that's like, like anything. that's like that's like saying because... Jeff Ross who's a who's a massive right. comedian okay who we all love here okay who makes tons of Holocaust jokes he is creating another Holocaust He's he is allowing yeah. for another Holocaust to happen because well, no, he makes light jokes in the group that if, yeah. if it was a bunch of women who made the the the, the video that that would be a good muscle but because we're men we're not the ones affected this part Jeff Ross Holocaust wasn't in the Holocaust. To us. He's a fucking Do you Jew, get bro. unsolicited pictures? So here's of my question: If a non-Jew makes a joke parts? about the Holocaust, wait. If a non-Jew makes a joke about the Holocaust, then it's not allowed. It's not then, allowed. Then it needs to be done with taste and care. Oh, so now there's taste, taste. in this. And that, you, you, now you're impossible. making like you're a. Never now you're making like he's a. He's gotta be careful. He's gotta be careful. No. Okay. Live so in my life, opinion, live in my in life. my opinion, in my opinion, if from my perspective, are you guys able, by the way, ever to hear an argument without just yelling at it, or no? That makes sense. Quick question. Who are you going to do? Oh, Feelings okay, argument cool. now That's about brilliant. screaming, not screaming. No, what are we going to do here? Well, it's just, it's, you're acting kind of like very emotional. It's, you know, like a, what, are uh, we, what's what are we doing? Now we're going to do reverse like psychology. You're acting no, emotional versus listen, another person acting emotional. I think we all agree what are we doing? that if you go to a comedy club, I've heard Holocaust jokes. I've heard I've heard black jokes from white guys. And I've heard Holocaust jokes from non-Jews. But there's, there's a certain type of like punching down. Also, I think context is important. I'll make that point first. I think that the context within specifically the fact that it happened in the from community does change things. I think if you were a non-Jewish influencer, I think things might be a tiny bit different. I think because the from world is dealing with like this kind of like, you know, birth of like, oh my God, women, right? Like maybe they shouldn't have equality, like that whole sort of thing. So there's a context here where jokes where you're punching down on a woman or jokes about sexual assault against a woman need to be treaded on a little bit more carefully than they would in more secular society where, where that... Agreed, and even in secular society, obviously, there's still some equality. Still for improvement. So I think that context is important. And on top of that, there's just, there's no, no one was, actually, I can't say no one. Certain people were upset that, that we found it funny. And I, my personal, my personal. More than some. So let me, my, I mean, thing, my, pers African my personal people. opinion is that <laughs> if he had said that joke, nice. uh, like, you know, in a locker room or whatever, it was, it was funny. Like, I laughed. It was funny. It's. You're, you can say something funny, and if people are like, hey, by the way, we think this might actually cause some societal, some on some level, some societal decline. I have to apologize? You don't have to apologize. It would be the mental thing, perhaps, to do to be like, hey, it was funny. You can't have me for saying funny, but well, I hear what you're saying, and you know I what? Can Maybe talk about, but I can and if you about, apologize I can too that much that to people, people get too offended. But I can say I, that about any society. Do you? Any do you think society, we need more apologizing. Do you think that that's what a guttle, how a guttle thinks? I shouldn't apologize because you know what? They'll take advantage of it. It's the same thing you're think, doing. It's I'm the flip side of what you're doing. What am I doing? That you're you're telling me to apologize, and I'm saying that if I, I apologize, say, I hold on. He didn't say you said before. I actually didn't say apologize. I have to tread I more carefully. You can acknowledge them. No, but you said I have to it. tread more carefully. You said I have to tread more carefully because on an EDOD, like at a small level, I'm decreasing the sensitivity within society. And I'm saying that if I apologize on a small level, I'm decreasing the actual masculinity and toughness and a positive thing within within society. That I have to sit there and apologize for every single time oh. I do anything that some random oh, person doesn't like. Is that your job? Is your job to like make people tougher? Is, my, is your, is your job to make, like, what? Are you saying what? Yeah, yeah, your, your, your job, your job is... In civil society, it's not your job to make people tougher. It's your job to be to be kind and listen to It's not tougher. It's my... I'm not here to put my, my kids through a world where they have to apologize for every single thing and walk on eggshells. No, hell no. Hell I no. I think it's our job to create the most functional society. No. I don't think our job is any yeah. one specific thing. Okay. I mean, okay, so, like, that's where it's... It's got too philosophical. It's too no, big. I'm just saying, that's not... Uh, okay, someone's job is, not be, Anyways, job is not to be... Anyways. Your job is not to be the most sensitive I want to know one thing. Question. It's not your job. It's did a part of something you're supposed to be doing. Shmoli, did you laugh? Bottom line, come on, tell me. Well, whether I laughed or not, as you mentioned... <laughs> you laughed, you laughed, you laughed, you laughed, laughed or not. As you mentioned, it may have been a coping mechanism. 100%, but did you but laugh? No, from my video, from my video. From your video? I don't honestly remember it that much. Oh, you don't remember? I just remember you were dismissing... The, the oh, pain the, that people experience the when they video. experience this harassment. I don't, yeah. But I, I also don't understand that you, you said two things that were very inconsistent. On the one end, you said that a person, if they want their message to be delivered and to be uh, absorbed at max you know, capacity, mm -hmm. that one should be responsive to the needs of the people they're trying to talk to. But when you got yes. feedback from your audience that they were asking you to please consider the pain of those who go through unwanted sexual harassment or assault, you said that you're not gonna apologize because 
How weak would that be if you just catered to what the audience wanted? A couple of things. So Co I think we're pretty similar. No, we're not at all. That was your audience, not my audience. That's number one. Number two is that I'm not trying to do anything with this podcast. I'm trying to become famous. Like, that's what's fucking <laughs> happening here. You're trying to make, like, change or whatever. I'm here to, like, make it that I'm sitting down and interviewing Dave Portnoy and Elon Musk. That's mm -hmm. what I would love to do. Like, that would be a win for me. Uh, you have a different agenda than I do, and it was all your followers, and then do with my followers. My followers, trust me, I promise you, there's not one person outside of Zach who called me up and had anything less to say than that was one of the greatest responses and videos of all time. I promise I'm you. I'm just here to make edgy. I had and people dirty sending jokes. it to me. It was, it was funny. Now, again, I'll be also be honest, and, and this is a little mean, and I, I, I say this out of love. I really do. I wouldn't have done it to anyone else but you. Like you. That's fine. You can pick on me whenever it's just, you want. Just because you're great. I let. Like, honestly, you're I just let. Great. Go for it. You, you know, can bully like, me I mean, as, you know as much as you want. Yeah, <laughs> one other thing. See, that I appreciate. So that's, yeah, that, see, that's, no that's good. And by the but, way, but the thing is, opinion. is that you're. It's one thing if you're picking on me, but I would just ask you in the future: Can you just try to take me apart rather than the people who have a shared experience of trauma? Again, like, you define that. Make as, me yeah. your target practice board, but don't do it at the expense of sure. people who are victims. For sure. So the question then becomes: At what degree do we always have to be worried about a small minority of people? That's probably like twenty people that you're referring to, um, regarding. The what amount of women who I, receive unsolicited pictures of male private that mean body it's parts at all. I consider that a form of digital harassment. It is, harassment. but that doesn't mean my response is now causing them significant harm and pain and oh my god. No, they're grown ass no, women. It sucks. It's a terrible thing. It should not happen in society, but it normalizes a culture. You're normalizing this bro culture in which it's funny to reveal yourself in no, an it's unwanted not. way. No, it's not. Why can't you process no. that particular piece? It's not funny. But you what happened at is it. funny. Because what happened, from an exterior perspective, is funny. It's not I, funny, but what happened is funny. That's what you're saying. The, the concept action. in itself yes, is it's not a funny. funny. concept. No, no, the concept in itself is not a funny concept. You, Exposing but, yourself to someone. But the action of someone doing it and being a moron is funny. But what gives you the right to make those two things mutually exclusive? If you're not a victim of sexual assault, unless you're saying it you could are. Just be, like, no, it my, could just be funny. My you ability to, to decide what's humor and what's not humor because I have to have experienced everything in the entire world. So I only if I've had every experience in the entire world can I decide on any single thing that's going on, if whether it's, it's funny or not funny. If it's someone else's traumas, then yes. There's traumas over everything, everything. in life. Yeah. Someone can have a trauma over the fact that someone said that, that someone, I no, no, no. Someone can have a trauma that, that, that someone, is, no, that someone can have a trauma over, but it's, again, this is where, my, in general, my arguments or conversations in life don't come, don't come in one by one, which is why I disclaimered. I don't know much about halacha, but it's the idea that I'm talking about traditional Judaism from the from the top down was my basic arguments. Same thing with comedy. Tradi traditionally, right at the end of the day, I'm not going to go pick one thing in particular, every little thing. If someone trips, is it funny? It depends. A lot of times, it, it's, a lot, it's, a, it's a lot of times funny. Why did they Wait, trip? It's a lot of, it's a lot of times funny if someone trip? trips on a sidewalk. Really? Okay? Is it funny if an orphan trips no, on the sidewalk? No, uh, hold up. Yeah, I mean, firstly, what to what's that to do with anything? anything? Because no, but there are certain demographics no, that we should be sensitive no, to. No, yeah, but about life. But the, like, but the exact the thing, if, 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 some, if there's an inconsistency in life, I believe that you can laugh at that. Yes, without with, with acknowledging at the same time that the thing that you're laughing at in itself, the actual thing of it, is not necessarily a funny thing. I don't think you guys took I think responsibility you can do two for that. You didn't, you didn't. I think you can do two things. And I don't think you have to, you know, I don't think you have to quote it every single time. Someone trips on the street. Not every single Everyone, time. Someone trips on the street and I have to, and I laugh. I don't think I have to go over to each one of my friends and be like, by the way, the reason I laughed at that person tripping on the street is because he doesn't have cerebral palsy and he's able to walk normally. <laughs> and because he's able to walk normally and he doesn't have cerebral palsy, therefore I'm allowed to make a joke at it. If you realized how much you were embarrassing yourself by your laughter, you would want to go over to every single person and I qualify so, your statement. So, so I disagree you, you have to qualify your statement every single- You just don't realize how it comes no, across to people who so can I, see the nuance for okay, what it so is. Okay, so I disagree. I think that okay other people see. you're okay with a society see, in which people no. laugh at other people's expense and traumas. I, no, I think that, no, I think there's two different things there. I think that you have, that you can have the ability to laugh at things and then also acknowledge the fact that people have traumas. I think that comedy in itself doesn't necessarily have to be because I think this is funny, therefore I think their trauma is funny. There's nothing wrong there's with laughing. Nuance. There's nuance There's there. nothing wrong with and laughing. And I don't think you have to qualify every single time that you laugh at something. I, I mean, if, I, if I may, as a really, really big comedy nerd, this is like something that gets talked about on like, you know, ad nauseum on podcasts right now. Comedy's kind of going through a sea change right now, it's, as is most of society. And there's this, there's, there's basically two camps, right? You can like go do stand-up comedy in Austin at Joe Rogan's The Mothership and it's anti-woke or you can do it in Brooklyn or the Lower East Side and you gotta play by certain rules. And so, you know, there's, there's bigger societal things at play and it comes down to like, 
basically free speech absolutism versus this idea of do we as part of civil society have a responsibility to kind of create a better context, a better society. And I think there's always going to be people on other sides. And I, I'm not going to vilify either one. I definitely, there are times, honestly, when I'm almost mm, like leaning towards that way. Because I'm just Same. like, fuck it. Like, I like a good joke. And it's like, grow a pair. And then there's times when I'm like, I like, we're, we grew, we're, I, we're Orthodox kind of, Jews. Like, yeah. we, we are used to this concept of, I want to do that thing. But I, I know I shouldn't. There's a sensitivity that, that it, I'm being inculcated through these halachos of, Lush and hard. I mean, open up lush and hard safer. Like the, so have, the little, like yeah. the little smallest things, right? It's about building a certain sensitivity. And I'm such a comedy fan, and I'm such a fan of putting my own foot in my own mouth and being able to say whatever the fuck I want. It's part of the reason why I love this podcast. And I still feel like alt a certain sensitivity. Yeah, maybe, maybe we don't have full free speech. You could say it. No one's going to put any of us in jail, but you can't be surprised. Or, or flabbergasted at the idea that people are going to take it to task and be upset and be offended by it because I think society is getting to a point where they're like, some jokes, it, the context matters. Some jokes, it is funny, but we're telling you, we are telling you that our lived experience is that this joke feels like a punch down and that it adds to a context. And, and it is now the person making the joke's choice. And I'm not saying they're a bad person if yeah. they don't, but they do have a choice here, which is not do I apologize, which means I'm wrong and I'm bad. It's, do I want to be extra sensitive and put that above <laughs> comedy as a value? Or do I put my free speech apolitism and what I find funny as, a, as an above value? And so it I, comes down to values. I agree, I agree with it's you. It's a sensitivity. I agree with you. I would say from my perspective, it's Very a, well I think from my perspective, it's a trusting yourself mm -hmm. that you are able, that you know yourself best and trusting yourself that you are still a good person even though you do those things and that you will, that if there are people around you that you trust, Okay, because at the end of the day, you are the five friends you are around. There are, you know, the people that you hang around, the people you, and you know, one, no one person should be their own Dion at the end of the day for everything and anything that they do. Okay, but you should have a certain amount of self esteem and trust in yourself that yeah, I, believe, right? I believe, right? I believe, I believe these things. And if you have people around you that you trust and believe are good people as well, you will make decisions at the end of the day in life that are true to your values and you should trust that your values yes there are going to be times where you're going to be a little more insensitive yes there are times where you're going to be a little bit more harsh yes there are going to be times where you're going to be a little more angry yes there are going to be times where you're going to be a little more there are going to be times where there's oftentimes no one said that you should beat what yourself I'm saying up is, about it what i'm I saying mean, is is that at the end of the day comedy like everything else is i think an in, is a singular thing to a human being that if they find it funny they find it funny they don't they don't and i don't think it's, it is an indication if someone's laughing at something necessarily, it's an indication that they don't care about that thing or they're not empathetic or they're not or, or they're not um, acknowledging that subject that they're laughing well, at. I think jokes about, you know, certain tropes related to anti-Semitism or, or Jews are, are very are very distasteful. And right. even they you even, believe that. Yeah, but That's if okay. someone else finds it funny, I would still prefer if they didn't make me the content and the meat of their joke that gets And I prefer that. when people make anti-Semitic jokes because I think they're funny. Well, she's making a good point, which is that she was part of, like, she, we didn't, like, ask her permission to, like, make that, like, she was a part of the, the funniness. She, she what every what happened single to her, time yeah, in the world, in society someone is, 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 is intertwined in any part of my public. life of a joke. I have to go ask every single black person that exists on planet Earth if I can now make a joke that has no harmful meaning, but I find funny. You don't and have vice to versa. ask. It was, she's a specific person. If, if you made a joke about your neighbor Gerald, then maybe ask Gerald, not every black Can I say person. I a couple like, things? Okay, fine. Well, first of all, it wasn't... Oh, we okay. didn't make... I didn't, first of all, from my perspective, I, I wasn't on... I didn't do the... So well, let I didn't me do say a few response, things. I didn't make a joke about... We didn't make a joke, I think, about you. Um, it was about the guy. about the guy. But it's not even the point. So, but what the guy did can I just say my point on this? Can, can I just say, well, there, he's saying that there's a difference. There's a difference. Did they okay. catch him on? Okay. Like, no, they're not going to catch the guy. The guy's been on every single, he's been doing it left catch and right. Catch me if you can, bro. Yeah, this yeah. guy's Leonardo DiCaprio. He's not getting caught. Jeez. Anyways, the point is, I I just want to clarify for that, and I, oh, I, this weird. is going to be a little bit of a strong take. But at the end of the day, which I don't really often do, so I'll do it right now. Wow. But No, but seriously speaking, I, I'll, I'll be straight. Look, anyone that does know me, and I'm going to defend myself, but... In this particular case, look, I'm a sensitive dude. I say I'm sorry when I need to say I'm sorry. It's not like I can't say I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, 
I refuse to say I'm sorry because I believe the definition and the people wanting to say I'm sorry and what's being pushed in the world. The group that wants me to say I'm sorry is pushing a woke agenda in the world and they are the people that want me to say I'm sorry and are, in my personal opinion, ruining the world on a very fundamental level. Not because they want me to say I'm sorry. It's for all the other reasons and wanting me to say I'm sorry is part of that, okay? And I'm not going to just cower to a mob. If I actually thought I did something that was very, very wrong, you could ask all the people around me, if I may mis make a mistake, I say I'm sorry. That's it. And I'm not afraid to say I'm sorry. I just don't, I don't believe I owed an apology there. And even more so, there was like the the the, the sheer like, it must be taken down. There must be an apology. It, it was classic woke mob behavior. I think that is a, I think it's terrible. I think it's ruining the world from every single angle. Like I said, not just I'm sorry thing. And because of that, it was a very staunch opinion. And I knew, again, I think long term, this is going to pass in one week. And I ain't fucking apologizing and I ain't fucking taking it down. And it's still there, okay? And I'm very happy that I made that decision because I don't think I really did anything wrong. And I think the people that don't know me, I, I haven't heard one bad ne negative review. The people that don't like me before still don't like me. And the people that like me before still love me to death. I just didn't, I, I don't think it warranted it. By the way, maybe to you it warranted an apology. Maybe. I, that I would hear more. It didn't warrant, like, the world being turned upside down and whatever. I, I can understand why maybe to you, like, hey, you're making a joke on my expense, even though with what we just said. So if I asked you to apologize, would you? This could be the biggest moment <laughs> of mislabeled history. the biggest history. moment of mislabeled history. I, I will say this. I will... I, I, <laughs> I will say this. If you were truly hurt by my words and actions, and it truly hurt you, and not that it was you basically saying, I can handle it, but all the other people, if it was something that caused you pains, my words and actions, yes, I apologize. 100%. I do. So I'll respond. I have a hard time believing that you it actually hurt you. I, I don't think you gave a damn. I think you probably even laughed in real time. You probably But like, if it really hurt me, you you would say you're sorry. To so you, it, yes. re it really yes. did hurt me on a personal level because of my own personal experiences. In that case, I'm sorry. Of course. Thank you. And I would apologize to, and I would apologize to any one person individually. Always. I'm just not gonna change my entire actions because I might be hurting, I don't know, someone in, in Africa who hasn't had lunch today and is hungry. Okay, like, I understand. I, I can't to, going to about you, it on a, a level of each yachad at a I, time. I want to go back fine. to one other thing, moving well, off this topic. You. Moving off this topic. Yeah, I really I by the way, I mean it. I'm not just saying uh, it I, to say it. I mean it. And no I, hard feelings. One last thing. Uh, at least for me, last thing, everyone's welcome. Uh one other thing I was thinking about. Um Gittin, back to that for a second. There's a lot, I, I think there's a big consensus. Tell me what you feel on this. I, I'll be honest, I, thought, I was getting confusing uh, messages from when I was looking on your Instagram. I'm of the belief that personally a get should, like you, I, are you, what's your belief of when a get should be given? And if there's any time that a get should, if a man has a right to withhold a get, what's your belief surrounding that topic? Um, so a lot of Bastons are adopting the normalization of saying that a get be given up front and then the end of marriage issues like child support and assets and money be determined after the get is given because when one party has an advantage over the other one, it tends to create um, an environment that is ripe for abuse. And for the people who end up becoming victims of extortion, which is countless people and people who have to give up their money that they're owed in their ksuba they have been uh, they have been adopting giving a get up up front um and the concept that a coerced get or an influence get is then rendered puzzle and that you know if the woman gets remarried her children are memzerim is all a bunch of moms are hysteria that is also not halakhically backed up by anything um and we have Harchakos from Abenu Tam that allow us to influence the man to give a get because we believe in his heart of heart that's what he wants to do. So all this fake news around coerced gets rendering mamzerim is just scare tactics and fake news. I'm not I'm being honest. You jumped to the mamzerim thing, coerced. I, I wasn't even talking about that. You mentioned specifically that yeah, get should be given in the beginning. So, so what's your thoughts as far as the, the obvious question? I think uh, which is. Um, you're saying that the get could be used, used for abuse. What about the kids, uh, assets, all those things that once a woman has, she could use those to abuse? So according to the recent, um, I, heard, I heard testimony from many divorce lawyers who work with child custody and lawyers who are appointed as 
the lawyers to represent children in the custody battles, and they have said that the temperament in the court system over the last five to seven years is that it the there is no there is no underdog component to the man's position. Would you trust they that? They don't defer to the women. W would you trust that if your wife was a psycho bitch? No, but would you trust that if your husband was a psycho with who would probably withhold to get forever? Would I trust what? Hold on. There's not that many cases. Let's just start with this for a second. You're equating the two things. You're making it sound like every divorce case is someone holding back a, a get for 20 years. It's not the case. There's like, how many cases are there of, of, of get them that are being withheld? More than three, four years? How many exist right now? Uh, Aura has hundreds, hundreds of cases. Okay, Their and caseload I'm, is okay. backed up I'm like saying, crazy. I'm not saying it doesn't exist, obviously. Of course it does. My point is, is that there's plenty of cases, probably just as many if not more, where women are fighting for custody rights and if a get is given right away, the guy is scared shitless about the fact that he's going to lose his kids and there's plenty of women that are crazy that would totally manipulate a situation to take the kids, to make up stories, women whose parents have a lot of money that will have political connections, et cetera, et cetera, that could totally sway a case. The fact that some like attorney said that the last five to seven years it's this way, that I don't think that holds like real grounds if you're the individual in in the divorce that is actually scared. That, so that's you're saying that the male should have the upper hand in the divorce proceedings. I, I don't think it's necessarily the upper hand. I think it's But a, it is because you're suggesting that it be used as a bargaining chip to make yes. sure that you get the outcome you want in terms of your access to children and your access to money and and whatever else. I think she will do the exact same thing with the kids and everything else she has. I think it's a menschlich based thing that both parties have to work in good faith, which is very difficult given the fact that when you have a divorce, there's tremendous mistrust inherently because the relationship has broken down, right. which is why a guy is very scared to give a get right away because she then will go screw him because she hates him and she thinks he's an evil person. And we discussed this briefly on, uh, on last week's pod mm -hmm. that uh, oh, for a woman to decide, no knock, but just like for a woman to decide, or anyone for that matter, guy or woman, it's not really real, but but that a guy that she divorced, that she now hates, is all of a sudden like a tremendous danger to her children to the degree that like she shouldn't have her children, ha have his children, is not like uber far-fetched. I, I, like, that's very possible because they're very quick to assume that when, when they were married, those kids slept in the exact same house. And to me, until you have a case that is so severe and so clear that CPS would take those kids away, everyone should have 50-50 custody regardless. It should not even be a question. But the men often don't want that kind okay, of that's a different. So that's a different case. That, that would what be a different case. What do the men normally want? I, I don't know, but not 50-50. That, that would be a different they case. They want like 70. They want to have more A custody. typical custody agreement is where the kids are at a main place for almost 70% of the time. So yeah. usually oh. there's going to be 30% yeah, okay, Why is 50-50 not the like go-to? It's like just... You want to be a babysitter fifty percent of the time if you could only be a babysitter thirty percent of the time. Oh, men want less time. Yeah. Yeah, that's what oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no, I, I, that's I just, that. Fifty fifty is losing in their mind. <laughs> I've said this before. I think that there's a tremendous lack of sensitivity for talking about lack of sensitivity for the fear that men have when they're going through divorce about the fact that they could lose their kids or not seeing their kids. They, men are perceived to be very masculine and therefore just don't really care about their children and like, whatever, exactly like you were saying right here, they only want 30%, they, they wanna go drink some beers, whatever. And I think that that's a very, very false notion that they're not actually extremely scared. And the same way, if you were in their position, I really believe if you were in their position, you would never give that get in a million freaking years until your custody battle was solved. Yes or no? Um. It's God. possible I would. It's possible that it's I It's possible, first of all. So we're yeah. already at that. It's not yeah, for sure. No, I'll acknowledge <laughs> that if there's an upper hand to be taken within a battle and there's a strategy that is probably, you know, that's not ideal or corrupt, but if it gets me the outcome that I would want and I really believe I'm doing it for the love of my child, I could see myself really believing that I have a, a, a valid reason for maybe potentially withholding a get. So all, but that doesn't make it okay. That's still abuse. That's called get abuse. Why is that abuse? Why is not the kids abuse? Why is it not the same exact thing? They both have give and pull. Both parties are scared of something. Why is that not an equal, let's work on it together. We're going to work in good faith. I, I just don't understand why that's considered abuse. Well, abuse to me- hijacking the religion. Huh? A little bit. You're hijacking the kids. Or the assets, or the anything. Right. I mean, your 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 fears that women have usually hold more sway in court, and not as they could. It doesn't mean every case. Right. I know many He's cases that has happened, do. and not only that, I know people firsthand like who told their spouses who didn't want to give them custody 
the day you give me equal custody and we sign that civil divorce, the next day I will sign again. And they held up three years and one four years. They went and they finally gave it and they signed the get the next day. Done. We're going to do this fairly. We're going to do this evenly. But the I'm get not was a, never I'm, intended to get the result that you want out the, of the divorce. Neither were the kids. Neither were the kids. Is his point. Okay, so and plus I don't even know why you think that. that Who says that kids are being weaponized? True, but the, but the, the specific examples I gave of certain men, the the men are the children are not being. Oh, used for as sure. Tools. We're not talking about that case. I'm, you are, you're making a statement that overall you you you've just said something that the get should be given right away, and I just want to get a confirmation out of you that you don't believe that in all cases. Well, when I say right away, you might think that it means like the next morning, but I just mean that the standard should be that the basin doesn't aim to reconcile all end of marriage issues before then green lighting the get. Very often, those end of marriage issues can take years to figure out. Why does that have to why? take years? Because things take time. Okay, so why? why, well, like, why what should... does that mean? Like yeah. asset stuff? Assets, child support, Content agreement agreements, quickly. having different, you know. Because normally there's fighting. That's why. Because there's fighting. Yeah, good. So why should yeah. I give up my get while you may just railroad me because there's fighting? What does that mean? Why would I? Why would a, Why would the wife be able to railroad more than the? There could be many reasons husband. in any given case where we're talking theoretically. There could be many. I know plenty of cases Listen. where the guy has no money. The 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 the, the girls' parents have a is. ton of money, and they will literally go. I, I know many cases like that. It's not even like one or two. I know like off the top of my head, like five. That they would literally then just call it for what it is. Say that you're okay with a get being used as a bargaining chip yes. to get the outcome that you want out of the end of marriage dissolvement when there's, especially when there's kids. A hundred percent. If you, okay. uh, if we both act like mentioned, you will get to get ASAP. If you are going to try to withhold the kids or be unfair, I will hold it one hundred percent. I really uh, hope that you include that part in the podcast. I will one hundred. Hundred percent, including the podcast. Okay, say that right so here. Just to be clear, I'm a very honest guy. You're like, okay with a person's freedom to move on with the intimacy and the relations in their life that bring them satisfaction right. and that make them feel loved and bonded. That that should be contingent on you getting the outcome you want from the from the marriage. From the say marriage that again. I, I lost. You're you. saying that someone else's freedom to move on with their life and find a new marriage partner is justified to be on pause until you get the end result that you want from the until, from the divorce. Not end result that I want, until I get the fear, till the you, right thing. To what you're being you a crazy, define as fear. To what okay, you but there's lots fear. Okay, but there's lots of cases that there is fear, and that's why when both parties work in a menschloch fashion, I have a question for you. Are you willing to say here on the podcast that you are fine with a woman holding her kid's from the man, Absolutely and that he not. has to give the get right away. So then what's Absolutely the difference? Absolutely not. So then what's the difference? Because if you look into the research, the concept <laughs> of child alienation is very often just a red herring that a no, lot it's of get not. abusers No, it's use not. That's a lie. To that is a total... from their from their role in, in releasing her, and they distract that from the is... abuse that no. they use. For example, there's there's a get there's a get situation right now. Yaeli Jakobowitz has not responded. That's his name. Yeah. That is the most, I'm sorry. Why? I'm just, so this is where I make it, just the name, Yaeli Yaeli, just the name Yaeli Jacobowitz. It's funny. It well, sounds why? like Pliny Almighty. Sure. Just like, you know, like in Gamara, like, yeah, Pliny Almighty is like, well, Yaeli Jacobowitz. It sounds like the name, some, like an anti Semite would call a Jew. I, yeah, I, I literally. Both parties at the end of the day. A lot of men sorry, who claim sorry. that they are just sorry, being Yaeli. strong for oh, their he's children a dick. He's a dick. No, are no, not dick. actually Fuck doing it for that reason. I think there's a lot of men that are. Okay, let's say there are men. So in those cases, so in those cases, do they have to give a get right away? Yes. They still have to give a get right yes. away. Why is it fear that a, that guy has to give a get right away when that when their wives are clearly manipulating the because situation? Because it's religious abuse. But they're doing child abuse. Maybe they're doing child abuse. So but one religious gets abuse is worse is a than perversion holding kids. of Torah. Oh, so also we're it's back. A perversion oh, of so, Allah. And, and holding one's kids is not a perversion of Allah. They they're two and, separate and issues. And blushing and perversion two of separate Allah. issues. And, but that's also perversion of Torah. Holding one's kids and 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 and. Uh, demeaning and, and using your yeah, corruption it, and power to screw another side regardless to, to who it is uh, or what the situation okay. is. It's also a corruption you might be You might be correct. I but know I'm correct. But at the same time, I'm an advocate. You can you can advocate well, for those things. You can advocate. But you're an advocate for what? I'm an advocate for a get not being used to create religious abuse. But why are you not an advocate for a get not being used for children not being used for your power. Because based on the research I did, the concept of parent alienation is fake. Do you believe it happens sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. Yes? Okay, so in those cases, okay. do you agree 
That the get should be withheld. No. Why not? Because that's religious abuse. And I'll why never is holding support. the kids again? You're, I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna run you in circles right now. I'm gonna run it's you in circles. It's a different kind of abuse that I'm not as passionate about. <laughs> you get to choose what you're as, passionate about. Yes, yeah. people get to choose yeah. what they're that's, passionate about. So you get to, you're okay with holding the kids back from the oven. That that's just not like okay with whatever it. It that particular keep abuse. Me up at night. That, that oh so so it again. Keep me up oh fine. So so me holding the get back doesn't keep me up at night. But my children do. Sorry. So I'll decide. That's such. That's such. Okay. Backwards thinking. You're choosing what 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 is considered abuse to you and okay with letting the other side go because you're not a guy and you're not scared you're going to lose your kids or you're not scared that your in-laws who, who have a lot of money are going to go and railroad you what or you're, you're not scared that they know the judge very, or that their family is going to go shit on your family what you're saying is reflective of a very slim minority so i ask you that so minority i adopt the policy that helps protect no the most amount Respect. of people and i'm asking you on this podcast Person to person, the same way I apologize to, you, apologize to you as a one person. I'm asking you regarding that one person that that case exists. The one person. Okay, that I'm, one person. Yeah, the one person, or maybe it's two. Well, you're advocating for, can I just say one right I'm now? Asking, no, 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 he's no about I'm asking finish. those, that one or two people, do you agree that they have the right in that case to be patient and hold till they get a fear judgment? No. Why not? Because that is religious abuse. I keep and saying that. And what the about the child abuse? Thing. What about child abuse? Says it's something it it doesn't about. have to. I don't. Oh, so you don't have care so to, much. No, no, okay, so you just don't care. No, I don't care as much. You're oh, right. okay, I don't great. care as much. It's not uh, my. Over, it's fine. not my. <laughs> it's not my field of passion. It's oh, not something I, I, I care I understand. tremendously it, about. It, it would be your field of passion if, I, if, if your kids were about taken. If your kids were about to be taken away, yes. I swear to God, it would be your field of passion. Can you I just say, aren't in that so situation. So we need advocates like things? me and you to fix all so, the problems right, so, in so, so the kids. But the fact you should no, advocate wait, for the second. men. The fact you can't answer that question straight and have to still sit there. I am answering the question straight. But a the fact should you're never saying no. Withheld. But the fact you're saying no. Yeah, not even in the most extreme cases it, it, should it get ever be withheld. But I just ran a circle around you. The fact that I'm literally asking you in that one case, the one person you're still, which you have no answer for, is still saying a debt should never ever be withheld. It should never be withheld. You're basically, but you're clearly admitting you only care about one abuse and not the other. No, maybe she's I telling you to start an advocacy about. group to make sure yeah. that even though in those cases, Why? Yeah. even though in those cases the get won't be withheld, there is an advocacy group to make sure the woman doesn't railroad the man. Great she's idea. not saying don't advocate for that and make sure that never happens. If, if but you she's that, making but if she a blanket rule because there's a serious no, but if she was in that issue. case, but 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 if she, and I hate that I have to yell in this podcast to get a point but across, was, but I do. If she was in that case, she would never ever do it, ever, ever. No women would Both ever, ever give up their minorities. kids in any single scenario, ever. And it's not fear because a man is expected to not... Uh, it's a natural thing that a man, sorry, but equality, equality, that a man is not thought of to be the nurturer. A woman is. So a woman losing your kids is the end-all be-all. But the idea that a man losing his kids is not as severe is a very, very overlooked thing in society. But I'll tell you something. When a man's kids get taken away from him, you better fucking be sure you're not getting your get. That's what's going to happen. And, way, I, I, out of and that's making your own bed. So just the cases, please make you know, sure to leave that into the I'm podcast. leaving all of it in. I'm just please telling you how they feel. In. I'm telling you the factual. The so you agree that if you're if you're saying that if kids are being withheld, the the get should be used to get them the back. The get should be held until the woman comes to the table and makes a fair custody agreement, 100%. Okay, yes. fine. I said it on but last you know, spot also. Very... I, said it, I said it on the Nakama pod. Did you didn't hear? You, no, I think you're right. I think you did say it. I said it very clearly. I didn't hold back even a little bit. But I'll just, get your cronies on this pod. It's hard out, to make a determination on but you also, who's like a, back to you. really alienating the children and who back the to you, ex is so, again, just pretending so, the children so, are so being alienated. Again, again, if the woman is alienating the kids and holding the kids back and holding the assets back and this guy is going to give his get and get absolutely crushed you don't think, you think he should give a get anyways and let himself get crushed, that the kids be taken away from him. Usually when yes you or no. Go, yes or no. But it, why are you saying he's going to get crushed? Because I'm, I'm telling you that's the facts of this particular case. No, that's the facts. That particular case? Yep, yep. This, this is, is the case. hypothetical uh, great. case. Great, I'm making a hypothetical case. I'm asking you a question. Because I'm a staunch advocate for women, yes, he should still give the get. Religious abuse is never uh, justified. This, by the way, this argument has, like, anyway. this has 120 seconds left. Yeah, no, it's all right. I'm just Less. saying. Less. <laughs> 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 I, 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 no just, problem. I need it's over. It's, it's over. I heard, no problem. I, 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 point. As much as I do like I think you made your point. spit fly across No, I think the, you made your point. I think I made my point. I'm That's very comfortable fine. with my point, and I stand by it. And That's by the way, in general, I don't take out anything for podcasts. If I do, it's not a really relevant When we have you back on, I would love to riff on the Holocaust with you. Okay, I would prefer not to do that if that's also, all right one last thing i, I gotta ask you one to last stay thing away from that as would you still go on, i want some of your ad money hold on would you still <laughs> would you still go on unorthodox the my unorthodox life if you had the sure. choice you would still do it wherever i can get the message across to appeal for help and outside resources i will go even one that is absolutely these are the type of things that i'm telling you otherwise does not help you actually make change because uh -huh. you're going on to a show which regardless to your attention clearly looks like a publicity grab and you're going on to a show that is clearly hating Jewish orthodoxy, and you're trying to make change, and you're covering that with 
That's the Agorno crisis. Do you think actually that that is helping spread your message in any way with a positive result? I think that it's a great way to humanize the people that they were making fun of by showing their audiences that, look, you can have people within the system who identify as Orthodox, who speak about injustices that go on in the patriarchal system, and they seem like normal people, and they don't seem like they're brainwashed sheep. And I think I did a very good job in counteracting um, a lot of the damage that some parts of unorthodox did. And I went in to order in order to bring balance. And, and you see it as me elevating unorthodox, but the opposite. Their platform is so much larger than mine. I was just trying to do damage control for the image damage that they were doing. Me, oh, I didn't see your episode, but you went on to show like the from... Yeah, to show I, that the world she came from isn't only just what she, she was on my Correct, because right? I explained no. that I I'm an that. advocate for women who is a. a, a but don't a you think but you're happily from don't you think and establishing? Yeah. Don't, don't you and, think? But but also whistleblowing on some of the injustices yeah, yeah. that but are. Don't you think whistleblowing on some of the injustices on a show like that is not helping make change and no, only hurting? I, I think the way that we would, that we heal a lot of our problems is by earing our dirty So going on and, shows that hate Judaism outright and make it very clear by making up a story about Judaism and going on there and continuing to shit on Judaism, that's the way? It's a shame that you see it as something that we need to hide and be embarrassed of. I think it's beautiful to show the world that we're willing to explore solutions for a problem. It's not a solution. What part of that show was a solution? Well, there's no Awareness. reality show about Gedolim. What? Awareness. Awareness, Awareness about Agudos. It wasn't true. She found an audience. The show wasn't true. And you were going on there and shitting on Judaism all, on a show that wasn't true. First of all, whether it was true or not, it's a, it's an, it's a sure. explanation of her own life experience. You can't say that something is true or not. But there it's were not factual a things. It's not a scientific documentary. It's not the National Geographic There or were the factual things, factual things that were totally 100% not true. Examples like, we have to say to Hillam while we have sex, Lie, straight lie. There is no part that was in the trailer. There is no part in Judaism that anyone holds of these days that believes that. I don't think she said that we have to say to him, but you want there me to are put it up? Yeah. Uh, on the screen. Like, I'll put it up. Maybe she, says she it in means the that we have to say a prayer. Again, th these are not things very clearly at all that make Judaism. It was a negative show by every single person's standards. That was a total uh, misrepresentation. For me it wasn't a huge but negative show. How do you? How show? could you not admit? Look, not, I you, you are, by the way, right now speaking for a lot of people. Uh, what? That no problem. You have to. You have to go back and say. Maybe that she had to say opinion, a prayer because her husband was really well endowed. Again, I would respect. I would respect you a lot more personally <laughs> yes. if you were like that was a poor decision that, to go on that. No, absolutely jokes. not. I jokes, I'm bro. very happy that I went. That, I would go again. Any but, platform in which I can spread awareness about ways in which women are being. So would you go on Hitler? If Hitler system? was like, if we're in the Third what? Reich, what? Jack, well, let me talk. Okay, if we're in the Third Reich. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm asking. We're in the third Reich. Hitler's talking. I'm gonna I bring out a point. Go to Hitler. I'm gonna bring a point. No, it's great. It's a great point. W would you just go on there? Yeah, da da da, and just go to the and I, I go on this, I go on this. You would do that? Probably, yeah. You would. Okay, fine. That's great. I, I just need to get the clarity on the situation. Wherever, wherever I can get access to resources and ways to whistleblow and maybe make the community feel a little bit embarrassed about these unaddressed issues. Yeah, I'm I respectfully do those think you are going around it the wrong way. That's, that's my right. personal opinion. Okay. That's fine. And, 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 you guys can agree to change, change is messy. I, I, change is messy. Uh, but there's change is messy. I agree, but <laughs> as messy as this podcast. <laughs> Just is. ask Hitler. But <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you guys are Jewish. You're allowed to make that joke. But imagine if someone else made that joke on their podcast, wouldn't you? I want to give a shit. Andrew Schultz does you it. Really I think wouldn't? it's funny. It didn't bother you when. Um, well, this is more of an area of gray because I think it depends. So if, if that comedian like has like bad intentions, fan, yes, has yes. all right fan base. But if he's like, like if Andrew Schultz made that joke, he's got a Jew sitting with him on the couch. Like it's a little different. I think again, context always matters. It's all like, context. It was but, but, but the podcast mislabeled hasn't necessarily continuously showed themselves as an ally for women. So we have well, not continuously showed ourselves as not an ally. I hope one of the, I hope one <laughs> we of have not shown ourselves as not an ally. I just made a joke about how that dress touch him looked. That's it. Two different things. That, that, no, that wasn't a non-ally thing. Ruffy no, Fryer. we've never there never been non-ally. There are three people on this podcast, and they all disagree sometimes. So that's that's a. Let's get that out of the way, and yeah. the record will show that. B. Um, I don't have a B, but yeah. <laughs> yeah listen, I, I'll be honest. First of all, I I, I want to say truly. Believe it or not, <laughs> this is we could big. disagree on everything. I mean, you should know something. Me and Zach basically disagree on everything. But I love Zach. And we get along very well. We don't. We don't have to get along, and we don't. Why would you not want to get along? I was literally going to say, I, mean, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate the conversation, despite <laughs> yeah, disagreeing with you. Even though this everything. has been fiery you know, and heated, I, I actually think it's an important springboard to say 
You do not have to get along with someone in order to be an ally. You don't have to agree with all their approaches. I don't have to approve of mislabeled or like you as an individual. I'm not saying I don't, but we don't have to be friends or like each other in order to stand together for Agunos. And True. the larger the tent is that surrounds the advocates who show up and say, I'm here for Agunos. Maybe I practice differently than you. Maybe I, I do things different than you, hashkafically. I hold from a different rabbi. But as long as we have that achdos to put, to, to, to put the Agunos voices front and center, that's what matters. So I get that you're trying to say like, oh, even though we have differences of opinion, we can yeah, still like, like can't each other same, personally. Two seconds out of the I think take it a step further. We actually still don't have to get along personally either, and we can still be allies Both can be for true. Agunos. I want Both to can be I... true. I think it's more important yeah. for there to be Ben al Yeah. Than there is to not agree on. Comes to, from the person who laughs at other people. Yeah, hundred percent, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Well, we I think get there's back to nuance. We're I think it. you can have both. Sure. I do want to say something, which um, 100%. and this is true. This is my my truth here, which is that I I've obviously know who you are. I've known who you are. I I I was from for a very long time, and like you're you're famous. You you are properly famous in the film world, and I think it's so telling that. I never once glanced at your channel, like really didn't like, I don't watch like a lot of from videos. So I just like knew who you were and heard what other people in Yeshiva either said about you or just like my friends back when I was more in the Yeshiva world. And my image of you was of this ditzy idiot from Flatbush who just wants attention, is a total nutcase, just in a pretty tight dress is going around. That was my image. Why was that not and true? Now, and now you're <laughs> sitting in front of me and you quoted, you Quoted more Torah than me and Shmuley for sure. Like I don't know Perkeos for shit. Me you, you're, 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 he didn't you're, quote you're any Perkeos. Well, I didn't quote any Perkeos. I think I said Halakas Neiros was Halacha, not a Minhag. I don't know. Maybe I mixed up over there. Whatever it is. The point is, you're not those things. You're very clear not those things. You're also very clearly passionate. And I might have been saying whether you're 100 right or wrong. I think we almost agreed on almost every single thing here. If anything, I'm just way more to left than you are. But the point is, is that shows me like yeah, there's. That's just part of the issue here, is that like, why was that my idea of you? Now I, I didn't even look at yourself. I looked at That's yourself. A I you gonna, problem, bitch. I'm, yeah, I'm admitting, but it's it's also <laughs> systemic. Job. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, it's it also is. systemic. Look, I got your back. Honey. I get it. Yeah, so it's just it's Thank just interesting to me. I don't know why it, everything has to be systemic. I don't think it's a systemic issue. I think maybe she did things that maybe that was her. Why can't that also be the problem? Well, Why is I, I, you know, it I'm not always say, a I'm, systemic issue? I'm not going to blame it on anyone else. But when I ran I'm for changed. city council, most people believed that I was doing it for attention. And no matter what I said, that I was trying to combat anti-Semitism or introduce legislation that protects Agunos or Jewish people and yeshivos, no matter what I said, everyone just said I was an attention whore. Can, can I say one more question? You were still on that, though. On that, though, there is this thing about, like... <laughs> it's the, like the number one thing. You know, thing. like, influencers speak... That is going to be my first Cats off the street. It happens to be that like when someone the street. influencers have a hard time sometimes being taken seriously because w once you're like, d like you know like it's like it's like when if the Kardashians came out and like did something like really really actually serious, right? It people have a hard time sometimes taking someone seriously when it's like, what are you even it's, famous it's, it's for? Like usually, you're just famous for being on the internet. No, no, it's usually something that's directed at women. Oh my god. Get um, out of people here. don't usually yes, challenge guys. men's intentions as Babes. much. What you can have no, you, you might can have right. a model, a male right. model right. who really right. just right. is pretty ditzy in all his undertakings, but then when he picks an he activist gets, like, issue, it's like, wow, he is really You amazing. could have like the situation from Jersey Shore come out for like, you know, men's exactly. mental health. They're like hero, <laughs> exactly. hero. Exactly. But you have an attractive girl who does it, she just wants Oh, the attention. hardest thing in the world is for a pretty person, she pretty just girl wants to make attention. change. Yeah. Yeah, 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 she just wants a, a nut free bikini, you know. Exactly. She just wants another uh, sponsorship. You know, I don't know. And she wants more issues with I don't know why. Non Jewish nanny wants to build a mice She wants to build a yeshiva with really? her money. Yeah, she told us on the pod she That's wants to come brilliant. back and build a yeshiva uh, in, in Florida. And she's going to get, a, oh, you're just, oh, uh, just I'll be honest. Girl. Exactly. I, I think the thing you're missing is the, the, it's a key word. It's called accountability. And, and I say, I'm being totally honest with this. <laughs> this is what I learned in my life. Look, I may sit here and think whatever I want about myself, and that is who I am, and I believe that is who you are, but my actions also bring consequences of what people think of me. That's Case fine. in point with what happened, let's say, with us. There's a lot of people who have opinions about me, and I understand why they have their opinions. Well, I'm the not sitting speak. here, hold on, but I'm not sitting here and saying it's a systemic issue. You're doing actions 
That you literally said that the woke speak. mob is like ruining the world. That's like sounds like a mini systemic issue, like a cancer almost. That is a cancer. Taken, yes. So it's a it's a system of people. It's not just individuals. It's the woke mentality creating a systemic issue, which is going to take over the world. And you're fear mongering. I have no idea what you're talking about. What does that have to do with anything I'm saying? I love doing this. I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm saying yeah. one very simple thing: that there's consequences yeah, to actions. Amazing, you just run to the systemic <laughs> angle. I run right. to the accountability angle. What did okay. I do that makes and everyone think that label wiener's a total douche? And I come up with the reasons. Just let me bring out my point. Okay. And I come up with reasons that are all actually good reasons that explain why people have a perception of me of why they do. And I have the right to try Can and change that or outside? not. Do you see okay. the belt he wears? <laughs> okay. He has a shirt saying his own name on it. <laughs> <laughs> and the problem is that when something happens with you, instead of looking inward, straight up, you go and say it's a systemic issue and it must be everyone's a terrible person because even though I'm doing things that no one else in the society is doing, it's a systemic issue, but hey, no one else feels that way. So I don't, I, I'm not sure why you choose that angle every time. It just, I, I wish I saw it as clearly. I, and mm -hmm. I'm not saying that there isn't truth to it. There is some truths, but it's just not, it, it's, it's like, I don't know. Okay, Close I'll try that. to take your feedback into account like, and I'll try to be more of a proper Basistral in the messages I <sighs> Thank convey. Thank you. Finally. And I'll try to like just not give off any aura that like I like it, like I like the likes or I like the attention or I like the shares. And I'll just try to audit myself for being the exact. Don't you know that you know, wanting role attention? Model. Yes. Don't yes. you yes. know that wanting attention is a horrible thing? Thanks for coming on our podcast, by the way. <laughs> All right, guys. Moving forward, guys. I want to thank everyone for watching this episode forty-seven in the books. Hope you enjoyed. I know it was a little bit of a heated thank one. Thank you, Flappish Girl. Thank you for Appreciate watching, Flappish Girl. Thank you so much for having me. And thank I think it's coming. very funny, label that or the, the prefix would... you chose for your podcast is Miss. You know. So you sort of like feminized your name. Uh, 100%. I love women. Trust me. I don't know. <laughs> and single man is more in touch with his feminine side than label women. I love women. All right, fine. <laughs> I love women. This Thanks is for the having most me. Donald Trump thing ever. <laughs> women, I love women. The best. Oops. I know the best women. The women. Peace it's all about the women. women.